from our end? It's from our end. Okay, okay. Welcome <laughs> to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And Erlen, welcome. Hey, I made it. And Atari. We'll just repeat the Atari intro. just yawned. He did. Oh, said that, what's the so problem? He's like, Are we not entertaining enough for I you? I don't think so. Well, we just started, so well, let's we'll, wrap we'll, it up. We'll give it a go. We're going to be playing some Atari 2600 games Dude, today. Back, back to the origins, back oh, to the gee, well, back to the right. spring that that's burst right. the show. That's right. I remember, when this, I was, I remember when this was only Atari 2600 Whoa, homebrew games. Way back. <laughs> this is when I first <laughs> started. Out, but it's nice to go back to uh, the original. And uh, play some games. I have to build up enough games to put together a show. And we have a bunch of games today. And also some previews. We're going to do something a little different. Look at some games Ooh. that are just starting out. That I think have a lot of promise. So I like to encourage, you know, uh, developers. And give like some early feedback maybe. These aren't games yet. You can't play any of these games Ooh. that we're going to look at. But they've got great ideas. We're looking at some POCs. Yeah. Oh, very early POCs. <laughs> we got some yeah. POCs on our hands. Oh, yeah. Uh, so today we're going to actually be playing uh, Quest Fire, Quest Water, Tank Ovni, all by Uloni Games. Ooh. And we have the developer in the Aloni. chat. All Uloni. And we're also going to be playing the release candidate of Robo Tito from VHZC Dude, to one, round it out. One of the goats. Oh, one of the goats of the homebrew yeah. world, man. VHZC. Yeah. Oh, we could do it in silent movie style with cards. Then, That's true. That's true. We could ha hold up little interstitial cards. Go. That's right. Erlen makes a joke. <laughs> <laughs> applause. Appla yeah, we need a lot of those applause <laughs> signs. We have to turn this into a applause sign and flash it That's at right. the audience. Yeah. Of course we can't hear it. Maybe they can like do emojis to give some feedback for applause. Just That's say right. ha ha ha. Um, we'll call it art. It needs to be black and white. We need oh, to it's, it's decimate art. the frame rate. That's right. Do a four by three. <laughs> little, little 12 FPS video. <laughs> do, 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 do little scratches on the screen. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very artsy. It's very, very, it's very artsy. possible to... Uh, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers who help support the show or put the show on a movie cart. There we go. And then play back the movie cart through the stream. It's Inception. This is exactly what's going to happen. That's right. And, uh, and it's good. You know, that is that's Twitch dynamite. That's, <laughs> oh, that's what everyone's oh, looking for. On killer Twitch. content. We <laughs> truly understand the medium of Twitch. They, they want silent. They want four by three. They want interstitial. They want it playing back on a 2600 back and it'll just be and if, endless <laughs> looping of movie cart to live to movie you, cart and if to you live. have to like pause to lip read and it's oh, yeah. winning <laughs> that's how it goes uh 8-bit poet elder for andrew atari arm scare code atari 1974 atari hb of hocock a bruno stack captain class chelsea mon jolts donnie mal charles will and shit like cuban is mozir no reboot dan if you see a dave m a z drexel dr mukaz e anchwoods gamma dev great offender h o j ivory tower collections johnny wc kabuto kodor carl g karakat crocker 2600 developed for lambda express mandy civic t mark and his marks basic and mick muse mike solomon Catal, miss minomer miss command mk smith mr fix neo mini nostalgic pursuit of graphics quahog orange woods Rendered Ghost, Re Repentless VG, Revan Tilly, Ricardo Pim, Six Weeks, Smitty B, Spice for Spinley, Rest Ramirez, DK Dan K, Trek MD, Tweeny, Vexorax, Vintage Gaming Memories, Vitoko 8 Bits, VVG Double Down, and X Ken X. If you want your name on that list, scrolling to be read out by this man. Airlines, read out so <laughs> quickly that you can barely understand it, just hit subscribe. Or if you're watching on YouTube, just subscribe there and uh, or hit like or leave a comment yeah. or whatever. It's everyone's dream. It, it is. <laughs> uh, um. I, I, this is not directly associated with homebrew, but it's tangentially associated with gaming That's fine. and retro gaming. So I wanted to take a quick look at this. And it's perfect time since you're here because this will put it into context for different eras and different age ranges. Uh, it's about nostalgia. Ooh, okay, interesting. And different perspectives on nostalgia. And I found, uh, ran across a graph of nostalgia peaks. Ooh. Um, so let's bring this up for everyone to see. Yeah, let's Might check this out. Small, oh, I gotta but... love me a graph, dude. Oh, let's scroll up here. Nostalgia tends to peak at a single age. And so some researchers, uh, it does, uh, there's a source at the bottom, um, did a survey of people and broke it down by things that they could be nostalgic about. Obviously, we are focusing on video games here today. That's right. <laughs> but uh, they are talking about, 
let's see, moral societies, happiest families, most reliable news source, but reporting, but best music, best radio, you can include, you know, video games. They did movies, television. They didn't include video games. Sporting events is interesting. <laughs> Cuisine. Yeah. Cuisine is interesting. Uh, the best economy. <laughs> I feel like that, is, that might have something to do with, uh, yeah. the, you know, know, the years in which you were born. So they have... Um, <laughs> years before birth and then years after birth so zero would be like it was best when i was born but that would be a bit weird because you don't really realize what's going on yeah you don't know what's happening so i would expect this would be around uh like your teenage years up to like 13 to 20 maybe where you're like experiencing all these things you're old enough to like go listen to music and form opinions about things yeah but you think like close-knit communities it's like if you imagine the homies you were hanging out with when you were seven like that's some <laughs> you, that's you, you you I sh if i showed you a photo of you hanging out with someone at all seven friends, yeah you'd be like oh my god it would hit in this we were like... bros man <laughs> we were just... so tight yeah <laughs> what happened to us <laughs> oh where's so and so what, where's what, bob now what were we up to it's like immediately at stand by me level it like, is walking along the railroad tracks, poking dead bodies yeah. with sticks. And it's but there's <laughs> the also, good old days. The, but there's also like even like the arc of your life, like pre-puberty, where like hormones haven't en enveloped you. Like the idea yeah. of like getting relationships, you're not even aware of that. You're literally just like, man, I just want to hang out and play some Nintendo or exactly. you know, N64 with my guys and collect Pokemon cards. Like I'm, See, you know, he's showing his generation. This there. is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, and we play these games on consoles that came out in 70s 80s 90s we yeah. reach into on this show and you obviously grew up with video games in a different era you reference n64 a lot yeah yeah right? i was like 90 91 was when i was born and so yeah. early 2000s is where like the nostalgia starts to hit for me right but even music like people play music from like the early 2000s right. and i'll be like oh my god because <laughs> you just remember like driving around in a car or listening to the radio right. with your family like, like you know, everything and... happened happens or all at a certain time you're growing up and everything's new yes, to you, right right, right? Uh, and when i watch movies uh not so much with music um a little bit with video games is that you start seeing things you've already seen before it's like oh that plot line yeah. or that type of thing in a movie it, it really ha has an effect on movies um but for people just experiencing movies as a new thing and like them coming and understanding movies a bit more Every plot line is new to them. Every uh, archetype yeah. is new to them, right? So everything hits a little bit different, as they say, uh, at a certain age, right? I remember seeing my first like rom com, <laughs> and I was like, it blew my mind. I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, I'm like, so he's going after this girl. He's got this friend. Yeah. He's, he's like loses this girl, and then he realizes in the end that his friend was the one that he was wanted all along. <laughs> and I was like, this is insane. And my dad was so just good. like, my dad was just like, I'm like the moment that he lost her and had to get her back. <laughs> my dad. Yeah. And that you're actually relating to these in real life too, as you experience them. So yeah, the, and and. And music, when you when you relate to music, you're, you're like, oh, this really, re I can I can feel this. It's speaking to me, man. Yeah, when Nine Inch Nails put out that album or whatever in each generation, it's like, yeah, I have that angst too. Yeah, <laughs> and the first time you encounter it, you never you have no bearings. But then no. I remember seeing the second rom com. The, and right. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and then I saw my third, and I was like, oh no. It's and then I saw my tenth, same. and I was like, so you mean? You mean in the end, somewhere around <laughs> half the halfway point, he loses her? Is he going to get her back? Oh, he gets her back. At the like, last minute, and he tries and fails, tries and fails, fails, and then he really fails. And then he comes up with the... Then he realizes his mistake all That's along. Right. He's been approaching it wrong. wrong. And and his idea about their relationship <laughs> isn't what he thought it was. And he, she wanted something different than he wanted. That's right. Oh, it's crazy. But it is the first time you, it hits you, you're like, oh, you don't know what to do. You can't handle it. You're not ready for it. Yeah. I mean, Beer Pro Cup brings up something that has been um, studied quite, oh, yeah, definitely. quite a lot recently in the past 10 years about, say, rom coms from the 80s. Oh, yeah, definitely. And previous. Even current, like, there's even current movies where you're like, oh, this guy enslaves her in a basement. <laughs> like, what? They're falling in love. That's you're like, not love. You're yeah, like, like, what? what Jupiter is... Ascending, was it? Or what? What was that? What was that movie, Tanya? What movie? Uh, where um, somebody. 
the two people wake up on a spaceship. Oh, the uh, I know the one. I and, know the one. And he kind of gaslights her into this is like Jennifer Lawrence and our boy. So they're um, still making rom coms or it? movies where Passenger, dude. That's the one. Passenger. Passenger. Okay, That's thank you. Movie. Yeah, so things are not great yet. Passengers still exist. And they didn't play it off like it's creepy and weird. They played it off like, oh, that's so romantic. What? (laughs) (laughs) Advertising getting worse. Anyway, um, let's let's go to video games. Yeah. And it's not on here, but you can see the peaks are all around. So here's teenage years for media. Here's a fascinating like thing that's psychological. This one here, the happiest families, <laughs> right? Was, was Peaks nine. around nine or ten. Before but, you realize your family. But there's a phenomenon <laughs> actually in psychology where even people who experience like unfortunate environments will look back at that period as very like full and amazing. Yeah. But then like often it get, you like actually break down the details and you're like, oh wait, no, oh, that wasn't because great. Because I think it's be well, I'm pretty sure it's because you think of that as normal because you don't have exposure to other families at that extent i mean you go into your friend's house and you go this is different this is very different sometimes and maybe you think that's the odd one out Uh, but then as you grow up and you relate stories maybe to your friends and they go oh no you had you had a bad child. It actually wasn't as good. As, but it, it's also, if you think like the maturation of like a human being, like yeah. that period of your life, your f- parents, your family is your whole existence. You hit yes. puberty and you're kind of on this new trajectory. Like as a human, you're like, now yes. I kind of need to find my own way. Your but, own family outside of your family. Yeah. Like on a, like a biological level. So it's, it's so in line with psychology where it's so common that like people look back so fondly at that. Like, yeah, that like zero to kind of 10, 10, 11. What's interesting is I'm noticing puberty seems to be when everything kind of takes a if I, were to, if I were to like look at the a common sort of uh, it's like oh things suck around, around 12 <laughs> it appears that the pre-pubescent pubescent era is when yeah. everything goes. <laughs> but the, the music and movies and television are about like 15 to 25 yeah. yeah and I think like I said everything kind of gets samey after that it's like oh i've seen this or yeah, yeah this is oh they already did this back then guess what they've been doing it for hundreds of years yeah. it's the same <laughs> it's... plot lines once you go to like film school and they go well here are the plot lines or That's here right. are the big uh here's the act of a, of a film here's the acts of a play it goes like movies before movies there was plays and books and it's all the same yeah <laughs> yeah um what is this? The best music goes off the chart into the, the yeah, news. It's so, what is this? This should be scaled properly. I did hear at a, one of my like <laughs> old um, professors I used to work with. Um, he said that like there were there was studies that like your taste in music for most people is solidified around the age of thirteen and remains the same for the rest of your thing. Which I don't think is everybody, but they Not did. Everyone, th- but they yeah. did. But it's actually a huge correlation between the music you were listening to around thirteen tends to be something that style or that. Right. Kind of like that sort of tone is something that really solidifies your taste yeah i can't say that's for me me neither but (laughs) but but but, but it's in line with what i have appreciated new styles of music along the way but a one i do go back to is is i i guess electronic styles of music that i i trace it all back to crack tros yeah uh which had really intense electronic music and i still listen to music that is very similar to that like synth pop music in the chip bit world as yeah, well right chi- that whole all like... the chip tune style of music and a lot of the ones stuff. i like uh branch off of that or are similar to that but you know i like punk and industrial and, and, and oh yeah different types of rock music and uh, rap and punk and and a lot of different music what, but what kind of music were you listening to around 13 i'm super curious uh pretty much garbage on the radio <laughs> yeah like trash <laughs> like um but i mean 13 would be 86 and there's a lot of there was a lot of synth pop music yeah. on the radio and it was quite a wide variety in the 80s you had metal um not so much rap because that was kind of the intro beginning yeah. around mid 80s where rap broke out into the mainstream it was it was for pretty much underground before that but craftwork i didn't listen to craft craft is, is is 
a little too minimalist, minimalist for me, but I really appreciate that Kraftwerk paved the way for a lot of uh, electronic music um, in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and what's it say about gaming? I'm curious. Does it have? It doesn't. Does it, does it doesn't have, have gaming. It? So you have to kind of extrapolate like television and movies and radio and music out of that, and they all peak around the 15. Yeah. To 20 mark and where a lot of people really get into video games and i think people have a lot of time that's a huge factor. video games you don't that's have a, a job huge factor. don't have to earn money don't have you family don't, you, yeah you don't have to have family <laughs> you can sequester yourself away you're angsty so your family's like oh, okay leave them be and i played just a ton of video games during that time even though you have school but like when school is over, it's pretty much free time on the weekends, in the summers and stuff. Also, this insane disparity between like in real life when you're like 13 or 14 or 15, like you're essentially useless. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like are. it's like there's nothing you're going to say that anybody's going to be like, oh, that was deeply insightful. Hey, <laughs> you just uh, tap them. Buddy. Yeah, come but on. Like, but you can like log into a game and 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 build and be ha and fulfill this power fantasy of being yes. this like part You're of a team. Hero. Yeah, or like you're playing an FPS, like wow. you can beat some people. You can like you can didn't have you that. can rise up a rank. Like <laughs> yes. you can like you what whatever it is. If yeah. you're do like a Dota guy or you're like a you know like a whatever your thing is, you in this microchasm can be a valuable person. Yes, but in like you feel valued. You feel like the hero. You're the main character as as opposed to your situation in your life where you are literally yeah. nothing. You have no skills. You, you just, don't know your outlook in life. You don't have you don't know your goal. You don't even life. know what's going on. I gotta clean that up. Get in your stinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you want is to just like have someone uh, talk to you and pay attention on some level, you know? But yeah, hold on. I'll wait for James to get back. Yeah, bad cat, indeed. Like, we had BBSs online, but we didn't have multiplayer online to, like, uh, early, well, mid-90s, really, when yeah. you could do LAN gaming. Yeah, uh, see, man, like, we used to play, like, Unreal in, like, the library. <laughs> wow. You know, of, like, the school, we'd all log in and download some Unreal and, like, play some Unreal tournament for, like, 30 minutes. In the library. So, yeah, because, nice. like, because the, they had, like, this computer lab library thing. Oh, nice. And, like, you know, that, but that's a very different time. But, you know, but, like, in, the, in those contexts, it's, like, you're part of a team, like, you're doing this thing, and then, you know, you, otherwise you're just, like... Just trying to get through chemistry, you know? Like you're just yeah, like, exactly. And hormones. Okay, so um, we're going to take a look at some POCs. Oh, we're we got some POCs. Yeah, <laughs> we've got some POCs. And three popped up that really caught my eye that I really wanted to uh, showcase because I think they're, they're on to something good and, and maybe we can uh, give them some suggestions or, or some encouragement at some least opinions. maybe we don't have any suggestions but uh um yeah so we, these aren't part of like we're not reviewing them not playing them through because we can't play them yeah it's, but, it's, uh, we're in poc category territory it's <laughs> what's happening we got some pocs at our hands exactly <laughs> pocs okay um so uh the first one is called ghosts and trolls i'm already in man oh, ghosts and trolls 100%. hell yeah so here you go um okay. and i think we'll load the newest build first which so is the, the top, top one. one and this is by oh, is it the bin one or the top one I can't. oh that goes back the top one so do the second okay, one cool. um so this is by alfred tdk see i'm experiencing nostalgia now <laughs> doing <laughs> yeah. the 2600 back yeah. to when we first played that's true <laughs> Uh, so this says, uh, inspired by one of the greatest arcade classics, which has spanned generations. It's one of my favorite games, without a shadow of a doubt. Its spin-offs, also released for other platforms such as PlayStation 2, are part of my library of favorite games. I'd like to see what the extent of the Atari 2600 could port in an understandable and playable way. So this is Ghosts and Goblins. That sounds like a demon of a yeah. head. So what he's working on here with this binary is the intro to the game. Where you're sitting with the the princess, of course, and your Classic. armor's armor's taken off, and it's beside you, oh. and then the demon comes on the screen, swoops in, steals her away, and oh, then you classic. jump into your armor. Classic. And you have to make your way to that castle in the distance, and it's 
This looks absolutely amazing for the 2600 for a translation of the game. You said this is like an arcade classic inspira oh, yeah. inspiration. And uh, yeah, also, one of the greatest and hardest arcade game hardest. series ever. I tell you this, man. Old games are so much harder than new games, just in general. Yep. There's a saying, NES hard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, new games are like, oh, it's okay. You get infinite lives. We'll start you right where you died. <laughs> you it's okay. And they, they comfort you and hold you tight and give you a blanket and a hot some hot cocoa <laughs> and then try to sell you loot boxes <laughs> that's right yeah you get this much of the game and this much you have to pay for yeah. extra <laughs> a bonus dlc you know all oh, this yeah. new currency seasons pass <laughs> online payment subscription model <laughs> 30 bucks a month but, oh, you yeah. discover that like wait a second this thing i bought that had <laughs> unlocks all of the game it only unlocks the old content <laughs> we have right. a new patch no so this um, this looks really good for Ghosts and Goblins for the 2600. I like this, like, you see this, like... The crouching, jumping, yeah. And it's into, uh, the characters we'll, look great. We call it combat base. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm guessing it's going to be flip screen uh, gaming uh, res, as opposed to scrolling because hor horizontal scrolling is difficult, especially at a... Um, or, it, or on some games, what could be done is it's kind of semi-scrolling, semi-flip screen, where you get to a point and it goes scroll over, and then you move, and then it scrolls over. And that is used to very good effect on the 2600 as well, so it doesn't feel like you're flipping screen over screen. Um, but this looks really, really good. Yeah, very cool. And also, like, reminds me a little of this Italian plumber story. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of things... He's a psychedelic... A lot of things go back to that. <laughs> so it's a classic scenario, though. Right. Right? So go down to today's date, and we'll look at um, the other screen that he has built. Which is this one yeah. here? Yeah, cool. And uh, this shows kind of in-game, an in-game uh, screen. So there's the castle oh, up there. Look, we got the armor on. Yep, we got the armor on. Oh, once you go up, you can't go down. No, this. but that's okay. And uh, it, you kind of start in a graveyard. So there's a grave, and there's like zombies that come after you on the bottom. So he's got the walking zombies with the arms out. He's got a good ladder there, and he's put them on a different uh, horizontal plane, so there's no flickering. But obviously, as you put them on the screen, uh, more than two things on the same plane yeah. will start flickering. But uh, looks really, really good. And he's got the lava flowing at the top. I like this armor design. Oh, my God. Ooh, he's awesome. Oh, lava's coming up. Oh. That is not part of the game, but Look at that. <laughs> it's cool. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> so I think he's testing out uh, different Just things. different elements. So that's cool. what you do with a pr proof of concept. You're like, oh, can it be done? That's right. Does it look good? Does it look good enough? And I think it looks really good this also looks classic like it yeah. reminds me a lot of the like there just is this sort of 2600 design has mm -hmm. these like the greens and, and it's just the colors are very specific to like this yeah. style and it's like immediately it, it reminds me of a lot of things that i like appreciate yeah. and it's cool to have the castle just looming you're like yes it's just like, it's like a mirage it's so close <laughs> it's <in the> distance <laughs> yeah We're just over this hill <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks really great so i i'm really looking forward to that and i think it works on the 2600 like oh yeah the the rest of the game is just an extension of this and different backgrounds and different enemies and he's got the design of these enemies what's the really like good. what are the, like the game mechanics of the of the arcade game that this references is... um you are scrolling uh left to right there's enemies that come after you you have different weapons upgrades Ooh, some of them okay. suck some of them are really oh, good they got it. you gotta get some <laughs> bad ones in there you know? so you want to avoid some of them um looks great all visuals are very readable that's what's important it's hugely you want important. it to clean um there are flying things um you, sh you can shoot straight um one of them shoots as an arc not great i think there's a second one that shoots in an arc as well um there are ladders you go up to up and down it's not on a, a complete horizontal plane like i can see one of those ladder designs on the right yeah um, one screen does scroll vertically, so that'll be perfect for the 2600. Yeah. And if he's able to, and we've seen what John Champo can do with games and tons of characters on the screen. True. But he's so, also John. That's, he's the, other, also that's John. the other thing too. You do have to <laughs> give him that. But I think just the basics, what is showing here with, um, the community that can help out, I think he'll knock it out of the park. And this, this on the 2600 
wow, this is people will pay attention to it like I am right now. I also like this kind of kind of like um, flickering kind of neon thing that's going on with this oh. like almost is this like a pyramid ziggurat kind of vibe like a yeah. hill like it's very I like that kind of design of it. And the good thing is that he's able to put all this at the bottom of the screen and keep extra visuals at the top always there um, so that it looks even better than what you can do. Um, so all the action will play, take place down there and extras will be up at the top. So it looks super, super awesome. Atari Vox Plus. Oh, see, we got ourselves on the Atari <laughs> Vox Plus. So, so the next one actually uses dual keyboard controllers, Ooh. which is very unusual, but he is going to adapt it for a uh, dual joystick. Okay, support. cool. So go to Arachnatron. Arachnatron, hell yeah. And uh, it's by uh, Kane Xavier. And uh, we'll have to plug these in to do it properly, um, which I'll do now so you can explore the game. <laughs> Johnny Shampoo rules. That's right. <laughs> Johnny Shampoo. Dude, the j sometimes That's you got to wash yourself with some Johnny Shampoo. That's and right. Hope Hope that some of the coding skills <laughs> seep through the shampoo into your brain. Wash those bad bad coat away. Get some Johnny shampoo today. Get some Johnny shampoo. <laughs> I, I we don't have a sponsorship, but, but we'll take Johnny. But shampoo. dude, if we can get some Johnny shampoo sponsorship, <laughs> that's on that's on brand. If I ever heard it. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, so he says about this one, I've been working on a couple of 2600 projects Ooh. over the past year and I'm comfortable sharing one of them. Wow. This is Rachnatron, as in Arachnatron, nice. a twin keypad shooter. It draws inspiration from Black Widow, which is like a holy grail for the 2600. Black Widow is so, so awesome. You are, you're in the center and a bunch of bugs are coming in to get you yeah. and you have to defend yourself and do a bunch of stuff. It's really, really cool. And it's also and I, arguably one of the most underpowered Avengers. <laughs> Where you're like, what is she going to do in this? Uh... She can jump, do some gymnastics. <laughs> um, she can uh, shoot some people yes. with, her, with her pistol. Um, you can move and shoot. You're bound to the screen. That said, background art, character art, and animations are all in. So hopefully it'll look and feel polished. And he's got the webbing looking pretty nice. So Right? I was skeptical about like what's this dueling thing going on, but what's very cool is because of the like buttons, I have so much flexibility. Like I can go up, down, side, left, and diagonal. Yes. And I can shoot all of those realms as well. Independent shooting and moving. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's a, harder on the keyboard controls, but a dual stick would be is, nice. Is is what people I. That's I what, really want to do a stick. That's what this. we're gonna go with. Yeah. But what's amazing is that there's a bit of a probably a bit of a skill. Like you just want to practice dueling. But once <laughs> yeah. you unlock... those attached together too. So oh. if you wanted to oh. slip them on, yeah, let's do this. So that well, might that, yeah. help. That might help. But but what I mean more than anything yeah. is that like if you got used to this, the potential for movement is through the roof. Like oh, you yeah. as a you as a as a person, right, can just kind of practice. Like even here, I'm already starting to get a little bit of a knack. And there's for it. extra buttons too along the bottom. I mean, I don't think they're in right now, but they could be like bonus bombs or extra weapons that you can um, that you can um, uh, activate. So the build this build features an enemy egg. You can push it off screen or shoot it to death with four bullets. Oh, bye bye. Goodbye. Oh yeah, it came back. You can push it. Okay, that's very cool. Nice. Try and shoot it. It oh, said yeah, four it's, bullets. It's not gonna. No, he lies. <laughs> but that, we're just we're just in a POC right now. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. That's right. <laughs> Animations for the egg are not in yet. You'll have to wait to find out what uh, horrors the egg brings. <gasps> Ooh, so something's gonna hatch from the egg. I mean, that is the genius of an egg, right? And you can fill the screen with tons of eggs, um, as long as two aren't on the same horizontal plane. Um, they won't flicker. So if you you can um, put a whole bunch of enemies on the screen. So is the idea we're in my spider web and there's yes. an egg in it? And That's right. So like... you're the spider. It looks kind of like a tank. Yeah, no, and I know. I think they're going for something a little different than Black Widow, so it's not Black Widow. Makes sense. Um, I, I love the start of this. This looks really, really good. And I do like, and also, you know, it's really cool. Look at this. So I'm shooting oh. and as I move, you see there's a kind of, you see that uh, diagonal spread? Yeah, so it stays. So you can do a, a, a strafe. 
Yeah, which is oh. really like, and then as I'm moving, I can kind of like shoot. So like, so there's four bullets. Is it four? So, I, so one, At once? two, three, and then if I go down, yeah, oh, there's like almost, six. And it, yeah, it's almost like has a sort of like a. That's a lot of bullets. Um, you'll have to wait to find out what horde the will. Uh, next week's build won't be as fancy. I'll get animations in and something else. So this. Did the developer of Rachnatron explain why they went with dual keyboard controls rather than dual joysticks? Um, to be different. Uh, just to be different. Um, but people are begging him for dual joysticks because it's it's a little bit. I'm getting like, the I'm getting the hang of it, but it's definitely like. Um, let me see if he's it's said. an interesting thing. It's like there's so much potential if you can pass the skill check. Like if you just get used to it, like you know what I mean. Like the fact that you can move in like eight directions and shoot in eight directions simultaneously that like, yeah. like look at this like i can be moving this direction and shooting the opposite way right dual like, joysticks will do that too it's so crazy it is really nice um let's see if he said but yeah if, if i just more more dynamic and intuitive with the two joysticks for sure oh he said i hope op i'm open to changing around the controls for the left keypad i originally mapped move down for the middle key on the third row blah 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 um yeah, it's true because like when I push number five, which is the middle key, yeah. like I I go down. Oh, okay. Which is fine. I just yeah. It doesn't. It does. Oh, here it is. I'm not opposed to adding joystick support. I just wanted to show off the keypads in a way that I don't think other games have. So he was just trying a, a new type of input controls. Also, I, and I just don't think it's the optimal type yeah. of controls. But if he leaves both in. You can people you can, can choose, do it, right? Yeah, and I choose. like having the middle one actually because what's it's intuitive because if you're going left and right, yeah. you're you, you see your thumb is on the same plane. Yes, it's so, almost like a D pad. So you're kind right? of like when you're just dealing with this triangle versus like the, oh. if you had to like do a diamond, right? It'd be it's like farther for your thumb. Your thumb's having to like do this rather yep. than just straight across. Yeah. Which is like it and makes more sense if you're holding the key, the thing, but I hope hopefully I'm explaining properly. <laughs> people people know the keypad, so they're yeah, pretty but I, at first. But right? I think it's a smart choice to make the middle one down so that you have that you have the option. Because yeah. yeah, it's it's just like the distance that you have to travel with your thumb becomes it's much like, bigger than a D-pad, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's move on to the third one. This this shows huge promise too. I can't wait for enemies to come in. I also could see a world where you have the joystick as your movement and then the D the keyboard to shoot. That would Ooh. also work. I don't know if it's technically You'd possible. You'd have to have a D pad for movement because it or yeah. You know what I mean a, is like a joystick a, held down. Yeah, because you could kind of move around and then if you put, but it's hard to do the two things at once. You're definitely like yeah. The only thing that would happen if you played that a lot is your thumbs would start to kind of like fatigue, which is yeah. which is a real a real thing. But I'm not I'm definitely not opposed to having uh, oh, multiple shit. inputs. Oh, oh for some reason. I guess I gotta load it up. Because I turned it on with the keyboard controllers and it gets confused. We're looking at Ronin. Is Ronin. Oh. So this is by Latch Key Kid, and it's uh, he says, well, it's finally. Time to start oh, on my New Year's resolution dude. for 2024 and program my first BB from scratch. Oh, cut ourselves a, I, a yeah, Ronin? Swordman, store, swordsman. I joined the forum a little over two years ago and came out with my first and only hack over the course of the first year, thanks to the excellent line-by-line -line annotation and pitfall of disassembly and the help of others on the forum, I thought I stumbled my way through it. I was surprised to see that uh, Karatika had never had a port on the system and decided that game inspired equally by the game of old and old samurai movies would be my goal in my first homebrew attempt using Batari Basic. Uh, I started out by adding in various, mainly visual so far, functions for the player character, like animated movement, attacks, blocking, yeah, and blocks. jumping. Yeah, that. Nice. Down, blocking. And you can, you can strike block from a block. And, and, or you can just do a straight strike. Nice. And when you, but yeah, uh, which I mostly expect for it to be active actions the player will be able to do given the one button joystick CX4 style limitation. I decided to stick with, and I want the game to hopefully be playable on original hardware. Well, we're doing it right now. I hope this week to add in a falling mechanic next, so I can have pit obstacles in the game to jump over. Have you done a jump? Yeah, yeah it's just jump. it's just classic up. Yep, and you can uh, change direction in midair, right? Yeah. Modern sensibilities. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, jump over, to, uh, and they're in addition to enemies and their missiles, but I'll have to research how to do that first, as I'm not sure yet. Here's a working demo of the character animation I've done so far, including movement, blocking down, jumping up, and sword attack, fire button, both on the ground and in the air. Oh, try and jump and... 
Oh yeah, so you can uh, strike in the air. So there might be like things that are coming in the air that you need to knock down. That's yeah. cool. Oh, man. The only other dual keyboard game that I know of is Whack-A-Mole, but I don't recall its ma name. Oh, I can't remember it's either. There's a couple dual keyboard games, but the Whack-A-Mole one uses it really, really well. Um, Let's see. I'd also appreciate it. Anyone who checks this out lets me know how the movement feels as I slowed it down a bit to have not the character skating across the whole screen in just under two seconds. So does the walking feel right for the amount of movement? Oh man, I, at the moment it feels good. I think the yeah. the X factor to that though is it's hard to assess without knowing the the movement of our opponent. Because if uh, if we're right. if if we if we have a very slow moving opponent or equally matched, right. that's the interesting thing. Like let's say someone's like like it's stupid fast. Well then like it's relative I think to like what the obstacles are. But yeah. I'd say like from the just speed a like seems good. But but from a like just a this point of view, I feel like very intuitive controls. Like yeah. I honestly feel like throw me in like get me in there like i'm i, I think I, maybe he could do a couple more like just a little bit faster steps yeah because he, he feels like he's pushing himself off um but the speed across the screen feels like it's not too slow yeah. and not too fast because some games are like whoa it's way too fast and some are like get on with it yeah right but and this, also, like, you know, if you're a ronin with a samurai sword, right? Thomas like, agrees. Legs have to move faster. Currently, he's floating. Oh, yeah. From, like, like a, an, from an animation, animation point of view, yeah. for sure. Like, he has, the, he definitely has a skating quality. He's, like, either he's in the NHL. Up, <laughs> yeah. Either speed up the legs or add a third animation in there for the, for the leg movement. Yeah. So it feels like he's moving a bit better. But it's very close. I think it's quite close. Yeah, and, and also, like, that's also, like, in a way, like, it's in a priority, but it's also not, because, like, if I'm in dynamically in the midst of a game, like oh, I'm, I'm not really gonna focus too much on the on the on the like animation of the movement as much as it's like does the movement work from a game mechanics point of view? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I tried to give some fluid animation to the sword attacks within the limitation of the standard kernel, where you're able to not able to modify a ball or missile from line to line, but rather only frame to frame. I think the sword is very good. Sword's very wonderful. Fluid. It's got and like three. It's segment. got an interesting range to it as well. Like, I'd be curious what the hitbox is like with uh, with enemies. So it kind of goes out and then back in a bit. Yeah, like, I'm curious if, like, right at the edge of it, if it's that's a hit or you've got to get really close. But it, right. regardless, it's like, you should get close. It's a sword fight, it, you, you know? Yeah, it's not a missile. That's so the whole you got to get in there. But, uh, but it'd be very, it's very interesting because, like, that's another factor is just, like... Down is... What is down? Down is block. Okay, so there's no ducking. Um, and the button is... Nothing right now? Oh, the button's attack. Attack. Okay. Attack. And you see a block, and I can attack from the block. Right. Or I can jump and attack at the same time. And if I, like, if I hold down the bottom one, I can kind of block from multiple directions. But he does have a jump, so he could jump over, uh, say, missile attacks if they have a gun or something. That's right. Yeah, depending on when they set this in time. Uh, the score area is uh, replaced by the game's logo, which I expect will only be shown at the start of the game. I like the Ronin when he gets to the end. Keep yeah, it there. says the light. That's cool. And it shows progression along the screen, which obviously you don't need. Yeah, we got our lives you can see as well on the, on the right. Almost maybe energy. energy. Lives. It's classic. Yeah. Very nice. Um, Ford Moonwalk. He's right. Ford it's like, Moonwalk. This is, I can just I'm hear just the King off. of Pop playing. Actually, more like, um, more like uh, when you're playing, let's say, a game on the ice where you, where you have a... A puck that you let go and you're sweeping. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, curling. Curling. He's this kind is... of pushing off as a, he's curling. He's got one <laughs> sticky foot and one slidey foot. So it needs, needs just a bit more animation. Okay, we are good with the POCs. Oh, I think we this got our is, POC action. They're in all there. POC fix. Oh, yeah. And I, I thought they were all really cool and really off to a good start. Yeah, and I also just am a fan of the aesthetic and style and choices of this, too. Like, just oh, I love yeah. I love me a good theme, you know? And Ronin, you cannot go wrong. Exactly. That's a quest fire. That's our next. That is the first game we're going to be playing. So load Ooh. it up. So let me read about it. This is by um, John Peter is his Anglicized name. Uh, I cannot... Uh, Yao 
Hi, hi, oh, I so I got a key. Cry. Oh my god, you're right in it. <laughs> <laughs> I really am sorry. I, I, we'll see what happens. So this was first posted uh, April 25th, 2024. Mm. The, uh, they Dude, are I'm, in... I'm, I'm on a boat. <laughs> I'm on a boat. <laughs> game over. Um, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> makes so much sense. What? Uh, games they've made. Escape Moon, House, The House of Mystery, Plane Racer Simulation, Tank, OVNI, Quest Fire, Quest Water, all this year. Hello everyone, my name is John Peter. I'm an Atari game programmer. I started... Okay, so if I collide at all... Hey, Atari. <laughs> He's buddy. very... He wants some treats, that's what he wants. See. If I collide... What? Check this out, dude. If I collide at all with, with a... Dead, game over! Dead. Um, I started in this market last year. I still need to learn and perfect my game. I created an RPG game. Ooh. Hey... Atari, that court is already bad Atari, enough. Atari, Atari. Uh, in fact, it is a saga of four games, each one with a different theme and gameplay. The character's appearance will also change. There will also be puzzles to increase the difficulty. So I've got the manual here, which will help us out. So I get on the boat. So that is the flaming port ship. The only thing is I don't know what to do once we're in the boat. Um, well, there are those stones. And you have to get the right stone of those four. You have to pick the right one. Oh, oh wrong one. Ouch. Okay, so bottom. Bottom's bad. Cool, so you see I'm going so through. Those are level pass gates. That is the blue key. The blue gate opens with the key. Go to here. Got it. Yeah. Going Lots down. So I, I think of this game kind of like Dragon's Lair. Oh, oh, not the right one. For the 2600, where you make specific moves, and some moves are, are deadly, some moves are not, but it is a very limited range of moves, or my, maybe like a choose-your-own-adventure book come to life. It's like, oh, well, you can go here or here. Oh, that one's death. Turn to page 25. So you've done, you've done the bottom one and the right one? Uh, yeah, and okay. now I'm going to do... <gasps> Did it! Now there's one missing. Now there's only three left. So it's top... What are you going to do next? Oh, <laughs> no. Not that one. Okay, so top. <laughs> you have chosen unwisely. Oh, next, no. Next, on the ship side, Is there a clue? Is face. there a clue? Is there some game mechanical <laughs> well, we suggestion? got the top one. We know one out of four. Trial and error is how we'll do it. Now it's 33% chance we'll of surviving. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, we got ourselves our boat. Okay, top. Yep. And then we, we, what did we do last left. time? Left. We did left. So let's do bottom. Oh, <gasps> so it's top, bottom. Up, down, left, right, A, B, start. Maybe. No. <laughs> no. He subverted your expectations. <laughs> no. No. Okay. So, the history of this game. In a kingdom, there were four kingdoms. Fire, water, air, and ice. The king oh. had, a, had a treasure that was uh, with such power, always brought peace and prosperity to the kingdoms. A wizard creates the treasure used by the kingdoms, one in power to dominate his kingdom and the others. Oh. Did you make it past? Yeah. Up, down, right. Up, down, right, left. No or left, just right, just right up, uh, down, right. I guess you don't need to do the last one. Oh, I really thought that was a port. Okay, I have played this game. I'll give you the hint. That one is very tough. Okay. You have to approach it from the top. Okay. Otherwise, it flips screen and you die instantly on something that's on the next screen. Damn. It took me a while. To now that is out. a debate if I ever heard one. Yeah. Blinded by his greed for power, kidnapping the king before kidnapping. Before the kidnapping, they hid the treasure in their castle. Up. Down, down. Right. right. Okay, go all the way up. Don't touch the walls. Then just touch it. There you go. Now you're a tiny dot. You are a witch hunter. Your oh shit, I yeah. didn't realize that. Your objective is to collect the treasures used by the king, united to awaken a powerful power to save your kingdom and others. Good luck on your journey. I'm normally pro witch, actually. <laughs> I'm less anti pro witch. Pro witch, yeah. yeah. But. I think witch has been given a bad rap. Yeah, man, and they they would just burn them and be like, be Is that like the treasure. They'd just throw them in a lake and just be like, if oh. they sink, you die either way. But we'll find out if you're a witch. If you, yeah, <laughs> if you sink, you're not a witch, and if you float, you're a witch, and then we'll and then kill we burn you. you. <laughs> it's like no, no, it's how can not. This a... be, how can this be the way? <laughs> okay, so what is going on here? I'm I think really you got a treasure now. So I think your only choice Do is I collect to get it. it? Yeah. Oh, let me look that up, what that was. Uh, teleportation portal. Oh, you're back to the gates. Back to the gates. I'm going to go into the gates. 
Sword What's going on here? Sword? Is this oh. a sword that's been rendered on a... A red sword on do we a have background. A, do we have a red on red background? Yeah, that's why it's hard to find. That is not English. Uh, Voce Venchu? I'm going to tell you what. I think that's a good sign. I, I think it is. It's flashing. It's happiness. Let me look it up. Witches be crazy. Oh, man. You, but you never know. Van. I finally watched that movie, The Witch. Really good movie. Oh, yeah. It's such a good That's movie. a good one. Black Phillip. Oh. <laughs> uh, translation. Trans... And our queen herself, Anya Taylor-Joy, man. <laughs> the queen. Oh, yeah. She was in that. She's oh really good in that. Uh, you won. It's uh, Portuguese. Did I just win the game? Yeah. Portuguese. Wait, I wait, wait. I won the game? You won the game. Oh, so that, uh, after arriving, okay, so give some hero gate wall, four relates on, uh, after arriving at the sea, there's a puzzle. The tip is as follows. We figured it out, but one of these stones is fake. Picking up another fake stone will take you to a screen with more stones and then you'll make it. So you did it. So you win end game. Yes. It's kind of, it's, it's an interesting style of game that you don't see too often where it's like, you have to do certain things, get you to the next screen, do a certain thing. Yeah. It's more like a puzzle. And and there's a memorization component to it, yes. right? You're like, so it's not randomized each time. Warning. So and warning. no, and no the audio, which was loose. very interesting. The tree ball is Yo. Loose. Yo. Oh, do you know what that means? Yo. Do you want to grab the box? Big, 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 big cardboard oh. box. How do we oh. do this? That's and we put it in the middle. And it's just a fun time for Atari. It's not a game. We haven't come up with a one cat uh, betting game yet. That's so maybe thing. we can uh, yeah, can think on that undefeated, today. Undefeated, undisputed. Yep. Yep. Lives on, man, in our yep. memories. Sp Sprite is undefeated. No. When you were in the room. When you're watching, who's undefeated? In my, in my in my mind, he'll always be undefeated. That's right. That's right, Atari. Um, so we've we thought of like some over unders on how long it takes them to get ten treats out of this. I don't know about that. Maybe we can think of a one bell a uh, cat game, where you can ring the bell in succession in a certain amount of time. It's like we have to think of something that's fun for the audience, fun for Atari. Well, as long as he gets treats, he's having fun. We gotta hook these gamblers too. <laughs> that's we gotta, right. gotta the, find a way to appeal Jones to these, for some, to some gambling. these filthy gamblers to get these important <laughs> channel points. Man, we gotta find a. We gotta find a. So thank you, Thrust. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me switch it over so everybody can see. You ready? Oh, that box is very askew. Cat box. Cat box. There you go. Cat box. Cat box. Ready? And drop the puck. Go. Get those treats. Get those treats. This is just a win-win for our guy. Oh, this is just <laughs> this is pure weird, fun. He, like. I mean, it's it's a bit more entertaining for him than just throwing out treats on the floor. So it gives him something to do. Yeah. He likes it. Hey. Oh yeah. Crunch, 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 crunch. Thank you, Thomas. Teach him Morse code. <laughs> hmm, that's tough. Teach him to, to count to four. You have to do four rings and then you get the treat. But if you do five, you don't get the treat. <laughs> uh, that's going to be tough. Okay, so the next game we're going to be playing is by the same developer, but we're going into the water. Quest water. So while uh, Atari gets the treats, we're going to read out. I'm going to read out the instructions. We're not just going to blindly throw ourselves at walls. <laughs> no, we got some time here. After the previous adventure in the Fire Kingdom, the hero immigrates to the Water Kingdom behind the water shield to save the other kingdoms. The goal, you need to enter the sea and face the Water King so you can get the Ocean King's castle key and get the water shield. Good luck on your warrior journey. Dude, I so want that water shield. We're luck. getting we're we're getting this water shield. Oh, today, we will not man. stop. I have the fire sword <laughs> and I need the water shield. Yes. The thank... air helmet, I don't know. Oh, yes. And the ice the ice boots. <laughs> ice boots, yes. But they actually help you on ice, That's right. right? They've got the traction to to get you through the ice. Uh, these are just some theories. We'll find out what reality is. Yeah, he still has to make the other two games. I feel like I feel like with this game, I've just been thinking about this. It has to involve a bell on some level. We have to build yes. off of the grounds that we've. I think the bell is good it's, because I... it it gives an audible feedback, so we know he has done it, 
and there has to be a treat reward for him otherwise he won't ring the bell but we need something what if here okay i'm just i'm just brainstorming i'm just brainstorming what if he has two bells and he needs to rotate between the two and he only gets points oh. on if he does the odd one and if he rings the same bell too many times it's it's over oh i don't know if it, if it would screw with him too much but i don't know if he can understand that but the going back and forth that's something. Like, there's something there with, like, he's got to do one and then the yeah. other. And it's kind of like, and I and if he rings the same bell three times, the game's done. And then how many Ooh. alternate alternating bells does he manage to do? Oh, what what score can he get up to? That's right. Oh, yeah, I'm, just that pitching, is, I'm just pitching stuff. I don't know if this that is... That might work. And we can try it. Let's see what happens. We I think, can try it. I think it might confuse him too much. But the thing is, is but that, we can like... Start him off like, okay, do this one and bring him over to that. Then he rings it. And we go, okay, this one. And then until he gets that one, we don't give him a treat. That's right. Let's and then, try and, that. And Let's see, try that later on. And he gets a point and see how many points he can accrue. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and I like the too many rings. You're out. Yep. And the game's done. So it gives it's like and then the and then you can bet on how many points can Over he under. collect. Yeah. If he can if he can collect. And like, we'd have to get a, a good um level for him. We have to go to get a good baseline. Is yeah. it gonna be five as a normal? Is it gonna is be it ten as a normal? And we have to have a cutoff too. It's like, yeah. okay, that's too many. He's just gonna go yeah, forever. Well, ten is definitely like ten's probably like that's it. That's like ten is like grand prize. Like yes, that's exactly right. Even goldfish can figure out and remember complex mazes. They got a rat to play Doom, so Atari can figure out alternating. <laughs> You're paths. right, Gavadev. I just feel like we have to. Gavadev has a lot of uh, uh, expectations in Atari. I yeah, think he might be he, able to do it. He believes. I believe too. I believe in Atari. I just think that like definitely building on the ground because he's already yes. associates. He, knows the bell. he understands this bell is he knows important. Reward. Yeah. So we'll do that um, just before. We play VHZC's game. Let's see what happens. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We won't. We won't do a betting with it. We'll yeah, just we'll. train him because we'll see how he reacts to the two bells. What his thoughts are because it's interesting because he'll do one, then the other, then the other, then the other. Yes. And if he and and maybe he'll crack the code and just oh, he might go ding, 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 back and forth. He'll let the both paws out. Ding, 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 so, use your controller to control the hero and his actions. So, today's then quest of water. Um, oh, I have something to read about from here. So, don't dive in yet. I have to. We're gonna we're gonna talk through the things on the screen, so you don't uh, don't get ahead too much. I'm don't just gonna hit a wall bubble. and see what. Oh, happens. sure. Yeah. Dead. Game over. Everything's deadly in this game. Oh no! Uh, Olani Not... Games is pleased to present the sequel to Quest Fire. The game has turn-based battles with strategy. Oh, this ramps it up. This game has a PAL version in color and also NTSC. Good luck on your journey in the world of Quest. Um, and he says, I'm going to do the next one after the two, after two other releases. I'm going to release Quest Ice. Will be the penultimate chapter of this adventure. So Ice is next. With graphical improvements and different game. Well, what's the item? That's what we need to know. Is it an ice boots? Is it ice? Mm, maybe he hasn't done it yet. Maybe we can influence it. Ice, ice boots, boots. Ice boots. It's always about the boots with ice. It is because you, yeah. otherwise you're you're, you're slipping. You're kind of fucked, man. What yeah. do you do? Yeah, you're falling down everywhere. <laughs> but you got the ice boots. You can navigate the difficult terrain. When when it's like the ultimate game where you need all four. You're just warding off with yeah. your water fused hatching with your fire sword. You're like oh, balancing on a frozen waterfalls. <laughs> Oh, there is couch compliance. Uh, press button. Oh, it's not. The yeah, last one was. Yeah. Come on. You lost the couch compliance. Oh, this is going to be painful. I'll give you... <laughs> if we have any note for you... Is couch compliance. Okay, so... We need some QOL. Okay. We need a little QOL. Yeah. Well. You have 20 seconds no. to comply. No. To comply. You have 20 seconds to comply. <laughs> okay, bubble to help you breathe underwater. So that's the first thing you need oh, in the game. Give me that bubble. That's a classic. Dude, th oh, look at this yeah. shit here. This is a classic, classic ball. Bubble. Like, sp like, like. Go design. for it. Uh, Ooh, and now I'm a, I'm now a, you are. You're in the bubble. I was a knight and now I'm under. So arrows help you guide you around the map. 
So go I'm for gonna the... take a wild shot and think there's something Some to the right. The bottom? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Oh, I go down? Go down. It's getting darker. What's okay. going on here? Is this an idol? This is the doorman of the kingdom. So you gotta get past the doorman. Do I just run You just in... touch him. Just touch him? Oh, no, you don't touch him. <laughs> no. You avoid him. He is the doorman. No. Never mind about that, then. Bubble. <laughs> Deceptive. I, couch compliance for a game like this is critical because oh, it is yeah. you're constantly dying like this yeah. total of the game like a game that is like you're kind of like you only have to reset wire. at the end but when you're like constantly when you're figuring like I'm gonna go with the side right and I'm gonna die oh what okay oh, I'm alive where am I though okay so hold up hold up this is something different in this Do game need a lantern? What's going on? So this is the attack phase attack. Um, up you attack down you defend What's going on? One. Where? What's? So I'm gonna go up. Yeah, happens. go up. Okay. What? Now in this one, to the right you attack, to the left you attack. Okay, you attack both left I'm and right. Go, I'm gonna do it. Uh, what did you do well, the first I, two ones? I did left and right, and then I did down, and I died. Oh no, it's only left and right. Uh, hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, okay. We're well, gonna we're gonna. We know. Get... We know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh no, I don't think we're gonna do well in this game. <laughs> uh, oh no, don't worry, don't worry, we got this, we got this, we got this. So you have to approach him from so the I right. So I come at him, I came at him from the side. Okay, good. And then I did up, up, and then. It says right and left, so do left? No. <laughs> so we're doing right. Oh, I did right last time and it was it worked. Oh, okay. Okay, so. So, so, so we got this, we got this. Okay, here. The Coralie, you can't get blood from a stone, you can't get treats from an empty ball. Yeah, he quickly figures out there's no more treats. Now. So we're going to go up, right. Up, Let's right. Check this out. Up, yeah. right. Oh, it didn't okay. do anything visually, but it, no, it didn't, didn't kill me. Try right again. Oh, okay, wait. Up you attack, down you defend. So it is up and down again. So maybe up, do you think? What did you do last time? Was it down when you died? I like did down, I think, when I died. Okay, so do let's try up. up. Okay. So up, up. Up, up. Okay. So wait. This is uh, the kingdom gate. So so we defeated the guard because now it's open. Or Get the, wrecked, guard. Or the, okay, let's, the doorman. Let's get in there. I'm so scared to touch <laughs> anything in this game. I'm like, okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. So we've made it we're out. Of, we're back out of the water. We got our knight back. This is good. So we're back to the arrows, which okay. are pretty safe. Okay. I'm going to guess that... Okay, that is the castle guard. Oh, maybe maybe approach him from the top. Maybe I'm gonna try this. Okay, nope, it's to the side again. Okay, bubble. Okay. Try A for attack. <laughs> okay, always the side, right? Approach from the side, up, up, up. up. Oh, maybe it was up, right, up, right, up. Oh, it's up, up, right, right up. up. Cool. Okay. Just right doesn't show anything. Okay, so we're going to just follow some arrows. Arrows from now the Now I'm going to try from maybe behind or... Oh, I bet it's the side. I'm going to face him from the front. Yeah. I'm no coward. Okay, okay, so this is up to attack, down you defend. I'm going to attack. Yeah. Okay. Then right attack, left attack. One I'm going to try left uh, is it up and right and up again? <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do Might it. Might as well go for it. Let's, That'll make let's, it easy let's to give remember. Let's a shot. Okay, pass. Side, up, right, up. This Going is fast here. to get through, okay? Oh, no, I was getting a bit, a bit... There's no sound in these games, so... Okay, uh, approach him from the front. Yeah. I'm no coward. Okay. Up. Right. Right. Up. Nice. Okay. So it's the same. Good. Okay, so that's. <clears throat> so now we're at the. Uh, what is this? I just well, entered. Oh, this is the King of Atlantis. We're at the Yo. end, I think. Do, so I, just, it, do I go visit him? Oh, this is uh, it's pretty much the same. Dude, Gaspar Noe uh, yeah. decided to direct this scene. <laughs> he did, definitely did. <laughs> he came to direct this. Red in his new movie, there's 15 minutes of red, blue, green on the screen. <laughs> flashing constantly guys i'm have, scared to watch it guys a borderline experimental filmmaker seriously yeah. okay i'm just gonna go see the see the king yep okay so oh, it's i'm gonna go up right up yep oh it's not okay. up right down maybe because right didn't kill you and up didn't kill you 
king. It was the last stop. You lulled me into believing. That's I mean, he's right. the king of the Atlantis. The king changed like, it up. He's gonna... got better tactics he's than, like, than the guards, right? The guards are like, we got one plan. <laughs> up, right, up. That's dunk. all we learned in guard school. <laughs> that was our training. They're like, impenetrable defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody will figure out up, no, right, up. No, I have any idea. <laughs> up, right, right, up. Let's go in. Okay, that's the guard. Okay, so it's upright, and then up, we gotta go down. Upright, down? <gasps> okay, we moved one closer. Upright, down. Now what? Up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Left? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Keep down? going. Right? Right? What is that? I don't oh, know. wait. I'm so scared. <laughs> right? I don't know. It's the right or left. Let's do right. <gasps> okay. I already forgot it, though. <laughs> no, it's up. Right, up, right. Okay. Should I do up again? Oh, no, was it? No, it wasn't. No. I already forgot it. Okay, oh, we'll no. figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll come back. We'll, we'll get our victory. Hey, buddy. Uh, I'm going to do left. Okay. Okay. It worked. You. I'm going to do up. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm going to go right. <gasps> Did I just win? <laughs> I think you might have. This is the... Oh, my God. I'm going to collect the key, and I'm going to do blue this. Blue castle key, teleportation portal... And am I gonna do it? Yeah, line it up nice. And What's this? That is the water shield. This is it. Oh, it's in English. Yeah, you win. Okay, that was definitely. We I don't know what you did because we can't replicate it, but you won. It was up, right, down, up, right. Oh, okay. Okay, sick. I'm it's, so happy. Someone remembered. It's on the screen. Somebody's recording. Someone it. remembered. Oh, what are you doing, you bad kid? I wouldn't remember. No. Okay, we won. Or you won. Excellent. Lots of fun. Now we just need the ice boots and we're off to the races. <laughs> That's right. So I, I wanted to include this because they're very different. Oh, this is fun. I've it's... never seen a 2600 game like this with inputs and controls and... Kind of almost a memorization game too, which is kind of fun. There's a trial and error psst, nature to it. Buddy, no! There's nothing in it, but... <laughs> you have to lock okay. you out of the cable room? Yeah, I know. I don't know what we're going to do with this bad cat. Reward okay. him with more treats. <laughs> yeah, that's shock not good. Shockingly. It's like, oh, you're being a bad cat. Here's some more treats. Like, mm. Tank? Is this our next? Yes. Tank Ovni. Ovni, let's check it out. So this is uh, also by the same developer, uh, Olani Games. Um, uh, Online Games is publishing another uh, action game. A new feature that is Olani Games is launching a challenge to do in this game. Accumulating 50,000 points or 5,000 hey, points in the game score will send you a modified game with your name, settings, colors, and different players made for you. Taking a photo and sending it to the email, and we will send you your modified game. So if you get 5,000 points in this game, uh, you get your own customized game. So, if, so this is kind of like... Um, Space Invaders with one enemy that wraps around it. There have been a number of games like this. And it's even got the Space Invaders um, type of shields down, but you can't destroy them. Uh, QTE, if Shenmue was a 2600 game. I've not played Shenmue. I know there's games. Isn't there video games in Shenmue? No, no I think they're a different game. Oh, kicking ass, you got 110 points. I don't points. know about that, man. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> you haven't died yet. All of this is is just, like, timing. It is. It's a lot... And I wouldn't say, like, I kind of have the timing, but, like, you have... Eventually, you get the timing. I think the thing that's, like, <laughs> shameful is I don't think it's actually speeding up. I think I'm... No, it's not. It's I same. think I'm just, like, having to... <laughs> you get it every time in the exact same line. Oh, you got a little earlier in there. Uh... So the instructions are, your barracks are being invaded by UFOs and the alarm has been triggered to begin defending... Oh, there is sound. I just don't have it up. That makes sense because we've had some pretty silent games. There we go. Maybe there was sound before. We're so sorry if there was sound. Yeah. And we... Well, they would have heard it, just we didn't. Okay, okay. We just lied about there not being sound. We're like, yeah, <laughs> this is a... S I mean, it comes full circle. We decided to do a silent movie. That's true. <laughs> we were like, just for uh... us, though. There we go. Callbacks. Oh Callbacks are my good. god, no. Okay. Um, and the alarm's been triggered to begin defending against these invading aliens. So they're UFOs. That's the green, orange thing. You're the tank at the bottom. Um, oh, the green things are headquarters. 
Apparently there's an enemy missile, but it is not, uh, it's not shooting. And I there's mean, barriers on either side. I'll take that, man. I'll tell. Like this game has flashing screens. If you have epilepsy Ooh, it's problems, getting faster. it's getting it. faster. Is it? Yeah, it's ramping. Maybe. I could just feel the timing jump. So do this 482 more times and you get a free game. <laughs> Dude. That's right. This is you what we got to do. This is what we got to do. Game this is objective. This how we're going to spend our, our life. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of our day. You have to protect your headquarters and your colleagues and fight the UFOs. Uh-oh. Good battle, uh, soldier. No. Okay. It. As it gets closer down, it does get easier. Yeah, but it's like different timing, right? Every so row like... is different timing, so you have to adjust as you as you go. Oh. oh. There you go. Oh. And the manuals are really, shots, really colorful. Man. So he's included the manuals for download. These are available on the Atari H forums. Um, Uh-oh. Okay. For download. Luckily, you, got, you kind of have a shot at it. I mean, maybe my tactic's wrong, but I kind of feel like just camping and like... <laughs> doing... Oh, no. You don't need to move. Uh, a nostalgia asks if you can move. Yes, you can, but it's, it, once you kind of get used to a spot, it's, if you move, it's different because you're going to have to rethink your timing. This is very much like um, like sniping in a FPS where you have to like you gotta wait for like you gotta catch the movements and True. pull the button before they hit right. Especially on like ones with scopes yeah. and there's distance and you have to think about dropping and wind speed. Do they have wind in FPSs? Generally not. There's yeah. definitely some that do. Yeah. But what? But like when someone's moving, you sh don't shoot where they've been. You have to like aim the gun yes. for where they're going to be and That's then right. time it for that. But in this one, there's a bit of a delay. And know your weapon and how yeah. fast the bullet and, can go and how fast yeah, it is. Yeah, because it's like you, in this case, you fire like right, right before it like. Yeah, so it relates directly. Like you think, you think modern games are so different than old games. No, they're not really. They just have better graphics. That's right. So this is exactly like an FPS sniper game. You just kind of have to like <laughs> line up your thing and hit it at the right time. Player movement is for closers only. <laughs> That's right. Who needs player movement? Who needs it? I think they call this camping. Is what they, yep. <laughs> they call this. Oh, you're one tenth of the way to your 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 Almost customized that free game. game. Yeah. I do have to say though that there is a like just a fatigue factor. I'm in. I'm dialed in, but so how I, many points do I need to win? What, five thousand. Five thousand. My God. Now, what have they when done? you want to <laughs> when you want to hand it off, I want to show something, but do it right after you shoot. So after you hit, so that um, so that I can show show the audience. Okay, hold on. I'll do it with this one. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. Let me. You got it. It's all about timing, and you have quite a quite a few chances. I feel yeah. because it's like how many times does it go down? One, oh, two, seven. three, four, five, maybe six times. You see, oh, oh, you, once you find the timing. <laughs> so, the UFO moves at a certain speed. Your bullets move at a certain speed. If you can time up the movement speed of the UFO with your bullet speed and the position. You got it. Do this farm 5,000. Let's do it. <laughs> Keep it on. Exactly. Let's make this happen. Let's get some free games. Well, it's got a little elastic band here. Okay, okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Holy shit. Is this going to work? This may or may not work. I'd need to put something underneath the elastic band. Maybe like a coin? I've got this oh, that'll work. USB, USB, USB stick. stick. Let's do it. Now I can't unhold the button. This is the this is the real skill check for this That's right. game. I'm super cheesing the game. Did we get it? Did we get it? Whew. Okay. Hands-free gaming. No, 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 here's the <laughs> thing. Here's the thing. There's something that could happen. Atari could lunge He could. For this. He could mess it up. He's looking at it. He's staring at he it. He does like, like elastics. So he he's like, hmm, I sense elastic. Of course, elastics oh, it must are not, super bad. It must not change its speed no, then it because this is working. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. 2000. There we go. We're going to get our custom we're, 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 custom cartridge. RNG. RNG to the rescue. So that's what you need to do in a game. You need so, some variation. Yeah, so either start the UFO going faster or 
different movements. Left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. Oh, what was that? Um, <laughs> oh, it's probably let us know that we just hit like a... Uh, oh, a milestone. A respectable. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. So, There's yeah. nothing respectable what we're doing. No, with... <laughs> it is it's very unrespectable. Just delay the start frame. Yeah, so you could have a randomized restart of the UFO by just a little bit. That would do it. Not, And it may be enough that the end user may not notice That's that right. there's some RNG going. Or make it a little bit faster one time, a little bit slower. But in games, you kind of almost want it to speed up over time yeah. to make it harder. Because so. then the first ship is not any harder than the last ship, than the last ship that you're on. Um, so you, so I did post this a video of me doing this in um, in the forums. So it might be good for the developer to just add a little bit. Yeah, of this a shouldn't be an it. option. Um, although this is like definitely in the cheesy category and like yeah. the player. But I mean, also, most people wouldn't think of doing this, maybe. But it is. A, but I recognize certain things in games now that I've just learned over time. It's like. Especially when t play testing games, yeah. And I do a lot of play testing for developers, and you want to you want to find these types of things out before, kind of, uh, you're finished the game, and you're finished. Yeah, because this is just such a clear exploit, particularly if <laughs> yeah. like you're um, giving a reward for. Yeah, exactly. I, I saw the reward and I'm like, oh yeah. Let me do this. <laughs> Let me oh, try this. And no. I didn't. And I didn't get to five thousand in the video that I posted because it, it takes, you know, it takes about fifteen minutes or something. A little bit. But I thought, you know, doing it on the show might be fun. It's a great. <laughs> so it's I a saved great, it for the show. This is a great suggestion. Don't send us anything. This no, is no, not no, fair. No. This, this is not is fair not, at all. But this is this is like. This is some user testing, you know. This is. Like, it would help if the spot would be below an HQ. Yeah. Um, I also thought of that. Um, if the timing wasn't right on the first pass, you could also do a timing on the second row or even third row. And it would just take longer, but it would get you there. It would still get you there. But any kind of RNG in incorporated yeah, into any this variability would, with the movement of it. this thing. But oh, almost it's there. almost like it. Um, there is something interesting when you do die once. It goes to a very different play gameplay and. The UFO does change its movement, so it might be good to. Oh, you just joined us at the perfect timing. Yeah, oh. we're we're currently like look look at our hands. Do you see our hands? We're gaming. We're, we're wireless gaming. We're, we're rocking. Handless gaming. We're we've we've evolved to the next we, next step. We actually did the neural link. Oh, we, we did are, it. And we're in. Yes, we're tapped in. Uh, Elon has got us gaming with <laughs> we, we, with our minds. It's invisible. He's really refined. Tell. It it's, yep. requires intense focus. <laughs> <laughs> the game is infinite, but. But 50,000 points is enough. Yeah. Um, so it says 5,000. Is that what it said? 5,000? Yeah. Or did it say 50? I, if, if, I thought it was 50. If it were, no, it says 5,000. Okay. Yeah. 50 would be... What right. happens when the score surpasses 9999? Well, I could leave it on overnight. But we have another game to get to. Yeah. And also, like, what do you really... What do you win by... Oh. You just get a number you get a higher. Right? Oh. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like we could leave it for as long as we so wanted. Here's, here's the... This is our rig, our contraption. Let's show the rig. There you go. So that's what's holding yeah, down my Yeah, we just found this perfect timing to give you some idea. I was I was doing it the old school way, which was... Oh, you know, you could do something as similar to Space Jockey, too. Oh, really? Interesting. Oh, interesting. Um, so... Die I'm, once. Yeah, let's yeah. die. So I'll take the my hack off. And uh, then it, it... It changes the behavior of the UFO when you're in... Oh my god, look at this, it's like... So now, its bullet is along the bottom of the screen, which I don't quite understand. What the heck? <laughs> Whoa! It's it, really hard to get It now. like jolts? Yeah, this is, uh, this ramps the difficulty. Like, oh yeah. What is this? What is, what is this? <laughs> it is, <laughs> what is happening? It's really hard now. Oh my god, this is brutal. And so it's got a barrier here too, so you can't get past this barrier. Look so at how it just darts, like... So you only have half the screen. Like a Jedi jumping off a screen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dude, it's like... Oh, it's so much harder. It really does feel like... Oh! Oh, lost another life. How many lives do you have? I think there's game? three. Okay, that makes sense. Classic amount. Yeah. 
Ooh, classic three lives. Uh oh. Oh no. No. And it's over. There we go. We did get a solid six thousand points. Though. Stella does have an accelerated mode. Um, I remember when Stella was put. Uh, that was put into. Um, <laughs> it said something in between the two gameplay modes. Exactly. What prompted the Stella accelerated mode? It was some game I was playing, and we wanted to see what happened after a certain amount of time, like a long time playing. And so um, Thomas put an accelerated mode, a turbo mode into, into Stella and we got there. Oh, it was Haunted House. Uh, yeah, there's a, um, and when we're going through every single 2600 game that was ever made, <laughs> a classic one, there's a moon or a sun, or I think it was a moon that goes, not Haunted House, sorry, Sneak and Peek. Um, there's a moon that goes across Oh, it might be chess as well. Chess! Hey. It's one of those. There's a moon, and we wanted to see what happened at the end when the moon got across, and it takes forever to get the moon across the screen. Nothing happens. It just sits there at the end. <laughs> but we found out. Yeah. Um, but turbo mode's super handy, especially for chess. And I think it might have been for chess as well, yeah. but I think Sneak and Peek prompted it, but eh, people can go look back on that. Okay. Sorry, I was on the screen for way too long, the flashing mode. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, okay, so now... Gaspar Noe directed yeah. <laughs> the rest of this stuff. And if you haven't watched any Gaspar Noe films, you may not want to. They're, they're, they're rough rides. Oof. Every single one of them, in one way or the other, rough. Yeah, and but 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 like some of the so most good, beautiful though. artistry in terms of like filmmaking, cinematography, sound design, editing. Oh like, my god, he's a um, master. Acting, master. I sort of, but you know, yeah, like I wouldn't yeah. like they're not bad. I wouldn't like look to his movies as like actor driven pieces, but they always no. have decent acting. Yeah, it's it's his way he puts things. It's it's very experimental. Yeah, way he puts things on the screen. I think climax is peak yeah. in terms of camera and insanity and very, of what's happening. And just very unique um, way of doing things as well. Yeah. A lot of his other things are just disturbing. Like, it's hard like really hard to watch some of his films and i respect the like, fact that a director just doesn't care if someone <laughs> leaves his movies like he in a way like i feel like he's the, one of those guys who's like does. half the theaters left he's, he's like, like good. good this is it what had I, an effect on this is so what i want don't load it up we're gonna try the experiment with okay. atari now so we we've for people joining us just recently we're brainstorming a concept yeah. we're trying a new concept if with... you will we got a poc on our hands <laughs> yeah we got a poc put your input in yeah you haven't seen the bells in a long time it's exciting okay so what erlen thought up is that we have two bells okay now what atari has to do is alternate bells now if he rings one too many times the, the game is over, over. But if he goes back and forth between the bells, he keeps getting treats up to 10. We'll say. That's right. So he can pretty much is guaranteed one point because the first bell he oh, rings is automatic. one point. Yep. But then if he rings that bell three times after he's won a point, so technically first one is a point, yep. and then he could do one, two, three, and then he's out. Yep. And we'll see if three is too little or probably not too much, but too little. Yeah, we'll see about this, this POC right okay. here. We'll so... If you want to be ready with okay, those. Okay. And it will only give him if he alternates. Yeah. So we're gonna I'm gonna really direct him. Yeah, just to sort of see see how this goes. And then if this works, <laughs> we'll bet on how many points he can accrue. Yeah, how many he can get up to. So we're gonna switch over to the cat cam. Are you ready? Okay. So we're gonna give you the one and then I'm gonna direct you to the other one. So I'm gonna put them fairly far apart so they're not Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, go. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. I know your buddy's not here. There you go. Good hey, buddy. Kitty. Okay, so that's one point. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> that is That's hilarious. That's what happens sometimes. <laughs> it does. Sometimes cat mode. Don't pull out any cables. <laughs> Sorry. You got it? You got it? You got it. Good kitty. Okay. Oh no, give him another one. He, he hey, didn't. Atari, Atari. Here it is. We found it. There Atari. it is. Look, there it is. We found it for you. Okay, so which one did he ring? He rang, he rang the that blue. One. Of course, it's been so much time. But that's okay. But that's okay. He's got, oh. his, he's got his shot, so let's okay, see. Okay, now you ring this one. Good So that's kitty. two points. Yep, two points. This is a train wreck. <laughs> now you ring this every, one. Every POC's got its noble beginnings, ring you know? that one now. Good. Okay, that's a three. 
Now you ring this one. Yep, harder. Four. Uh, four points. Oh my god. Oh, he's so he's so excited. Panicked about it. I don't, I don't even see where it is. He's so used to evading <laughs> defenders. Well, Sprite was fast at eating those treats out of him. Atari went for the out of bounds glitch. Yeah. He really did. The rules probably work better automated in some way, so Atari doesn't sim simply uh, need to appeal to the human like negative sound if he rings the bell wrong. A different one when he errors out. That would require some electronic. This feels rather sad. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you want to you have a... Yes. What color does he actually see on those bells? I don't know. I can't remember what cats are able to see and what they're not able to see. You lost it? Oh, maybe give him another one. No, not that bell. You have to go to this one now. Let's see. This bell. No, not okay, that Okay, so that's one. one strike. This one. There you go. Yeah, that bell. Good kitty. Okay, so he's, 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 he's thinking about it. He's, he's, I didn't tap the floor. I just pointed at it. And soon. Okay, now that one. Nope, that one. Atari, that one. Okay, that so bell. that's like... Nope, nope. So that's nope. one strike. That bell. One strike. It resets. That bell. Two, Two. strikes. That bell. Three strikes. <laughs> He's out. That, he is, technically. That bell. Want a reward. Because he has it? to learn by rewarding. That bell. This one. I have to ring that one. This one this time. Ring that bell. Come on. No. Ring that bell. Well, we can call that game that right bell. there. Because it's like... Well, he has to learn that sometimes he will get treats. There we go. Good kitty. Might confuse him, though. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Yeah, so much for... Okay, that bell now. The other bell. Oh, he's not done. He found it. He found a little scrap. Okay, that bell now. Good kitty. Wait till he's done. That bell now. Pink. Nope. Nope. That bell. Nope. That one. Nope. That one. Atari. This one. Well, this what's bell. interesting here this is bell. like, there, there we go. Now he's out, right? That bell. Yeah. That bell. That bell. Come on, ring this bell. You're seeing behind the curtains, everyone. <laughs> you didn't see all the training that went into teaching these cats to ring the bells. No, nope. this one. This one. This one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> That bell. This bell. I don't know about this game. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's it, hard. But, but the thing is, is I do know about this game because he would have been out and then his points yes. are done and then people can bet, right? Oh, that works. That 100% works. But unless he does alternate, it's, it's going to be a sad game where he gets one treat. But that, that could be how it goes, <laughs> right? Who knows? Okay, you're done. Give him a, give him a couple treats as, as his end. As his end. And happy, happy goal! There Yay! Go, you did, you did, you tried. You get the participation ribbon. Good little POC. Ribbon. We're, 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 we're trying out some stuff. Wash your hands. Oh yeah, I guess it's pretty nasty. We tried. So let's see. Atari's a lefty. That's why. So much for Atari's. Uh, they can see most colors except red. So you probably see blue and gray for the two bells. Well, then they are Sounds different. Sounds an interesting concept. They do uh, sound different. Bling. Oh yeah. Like a, maybe we can like buzzer. Yeah, if we have something, something different. Yeah. Maybe put the treat by the bell you want to ring. Well, he would just eat the treat then. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> maybe make it time-based. Number of rings in a time limit. We did think of that. So maybe we can try that next time. That's a simpler option, right? Yeah. Yeah, how, how, how quickly does he get to 10? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, he can do that all day long. But the long. other thing is, then it's like a bad treat fallen, <laughs> you know, out of bounds. Yeah. I, or I was the other thing I was thinking of timing how fast how many trees he can get in X minutes right um, or how long does it take for him to get to 10 like something yeah something like that okay next game we're going to be playing is Robo Tito this is the release candidate and I know from experience that I'm going to just hit it and see like I won't jump in but I'll just yeah go for it that um, release candidates from Bob 
Release candidates from... Yeah, he did. He went under the, under yeah, the he's, sand. He's trying to find his other two treats. He remembers. He's not dumb. He, he keeps track. Cats are very good at keeping track of things. Yeah. Like people in the house, like where everyone is, where they saw bugs first he found appeared. It. Good, good what job. What a champion. Another thing is that we can do with Atari is have him get have a maze and find all the treats. And how fast can he find like 10 treats in some sort of mazy thing? Because um, people have built like boxes and, and they have to stick their paws in and grab the treats out of the box. Uh, so this is first posted April 26, 2024. Uh, we had the world premiere of Robo Tito. So this is kind of uh, the book ending it where he's almost done this game. It's 32K game. He said, hi, I want to share my most recent project, Robo Tito, AKA Tito Erro Robo Tito Contra Los Fantasmas. Uh, it is a jumpless platformer. Did you play this game before? No, I've never played this one. It is a jumpless platformer where you control Tito, a robot that can't jump but he can stretch to reach platforms and hang from them. Um, due to a programming error in his system, he is allergic to scary things. Uh, to his misfortune, he is trapped in a place infested with scary things. Zombies. I feel you, buddy. Me too. Oh, it's, it's the worst. Zombies, ghosts, bats, and skulls. Terrible. Not good stuff. So he has to look for an exit, avoiding to touch these spooky stuff. Okay, so you know the premise. We can jump right into it. This will go like how most VHZC games go. For me, it's that like, okay, so he comes, oh, he kind of like. Yes, he can stretch up, reach the top, then move over and avoid them. Interesting. And this is kind of a training screen. Whoa. This one, they move. So to watch them, there you go. There you go. As I said, this is going to be like all VHZC games where like I fail a bunch and then we pass it to James. <laughs> They're doing the um, thriller dance, if you watch. <laughs> Michael Jackson's thriller. So these are, these are training screens. Get you used to, like, going over things. Now it introduces some timing pro timing issues. Uh, oh, I didn't realize that, like... Robo Tito, little robot in Spanish. Yeah. Did he go back under the stand to get the missing treat? Yes. Have you ever tried to play fetch with him? He, um... He has played fetch in the past, and then once ever, once in a while, like once a year, all of a sudden, he'd be like, it's time to play fetch. And he'll do it for like What's this 15 thing? Let's times find in out. a row. Ah, pulls down a platform. Is it? For a limited time only. It's a limited time offer. We had the cat that would do a wad with a wad of string. Ah! Oh, I had it. Oh, you know what? Head. You could do a fetch game. Definitely. Where if he returns it, he gets a treat. Ooh. Ah. Oh, yeah, any part of the body will result in death. So dramatic. It's very dramatic. Oh, I missed the pendulum. Oh, no. Oh, so close. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta move quick on that. Oh, oh. too far! Oh. There you, go. there you go. It's interesting. There's a zero and a question mark, and then your score. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, I haven't been keeping track of the zero and the question mark. Oh, oh shit! The lightning. So you, got, <laughs> you got two paths. I have lots of issues to contend with. Yep, lots of lightning. I've got to watch. Could have made it all the way through. Oh yeah, I was <laughs> being conservative when I should have been brave. Yeah, I play very differently than a lot of people. I just run for it. So I, well, I mean, that's the way. To, that's the way to do it, man. Like, well, sometimes it gets me in a lot of trouble because I'm, I'm like, no, I don't recognize, I don't watch the patterns, and I just go for it and I die. Ooh, that's a pit of death. Oh, nice. Boing, boing, boing. So this was still in the original game we played. Ah, wrap around. Just curious what's going on over here. Other than flaming death. Flaming <laughs> death. Oh, a screw. That'll unveil something. Let's find out what happens. Oh, oh, no, it's just a push button that alters something somewhere else. I bet you this is, I, I have a theory. I got a working theory that, that, that as soon as I go here. No. No, no, it didn't change that. Oh, what is interesting time to is get across. That... Oh. 
Whoa, just on the edge. Nice. Something will appear. Oh, something will appear way back then. Beachhead Sea does do a little bit of backtracking. Not enough to be, like, annoying, but enough that you don't have to go too far usually. Uh. Oh, he's almost got it. No, just go through. Go under. You got it. There it is. There it is. Oh, come on. You can get that. Just get your claw in there. Oh, he's almost got it. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You need your claws cut. That's for sure. Okay, I made it back to here, but I'm wondering if this is what I'm supposed to do. I didn't see any other paths, though. Whoa. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Mistakes for me. I'll pass it over to you. Yeah? You done? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you're so much better at these than me. Uh, just playing. Practice. Playing. And... Yeah, practice. Okay. <laughs> it's like an Erlen, not Atari. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually kind of nice when that happens. Yeah, usually it's some band I don't want to see. But yeah, but it might be one you do want to see. Have you seen the uh, Furiosa movie yet? I did, opening night. I checked it out as well. I okay, well, we can talk about it. Tanya and I saw it. We we gave a... Oh, that's on the game. I'm like, what is that? Uh, we gave a, a non-plot review of it. Yeah. Spoiler-free review of it. Um, and we told everybody to, like... Close your ears. For the <laughs> they spoiler didn't want part. to. Uh, no, we didn't even give any spoilers. Yeah. We just just gave a review. If anybody didn't want to hear the review. Yeah. So has anybody me. else seen it in the chat? Kind of is like, la, 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 la. Oh, there's another path up there. Oh yeah, let's explore this. Um, I think I want to push the button first. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I was I was distracted. This thing was very very cool. The skull. Oh, you don't have to duck. Good. I think you had to duck before. Um, in the in the build before that. Yeah. Um, so uh, we will do another maybe spoilery one. Maybe let's. Uh, but people can close their ears and we'll wave to the camera like this when we're done. Yeah. Okay. Oh, not paying attention. Okay, so I want to hear what you thought of it because people have already heard what I thought of it. Man, I when I was watching it, my entire like experience of that film, I just felt this overwhelming appreciation that like we get to see a seventy nine year old George Miller getting to direct a film. Like, yeah. This guy who like made movies in like the eighties and 70s. is like and and is like this really old school director who like yep. would have dreamed of having the technology we have is getting to like visualize his like world it really to me felt like dlc to a video game you know yeah, like when yeah, you like that's true. He's wait, built world building and right? you're kind of like circling back and i love the like in a way i like the pace of it that it was like it wasn't as like fast paced no and and was in weirdly i almost felt myself more excited about the character stuff and just yes. getting to hang out and his world and I that thought that was the bonus I it was the, like character now we get to understand the characters a bit more and visit these locations and I just they were only talked about yeah and I really actually like was so like I don't I'm not like a I'm not against him as an actor Chris Hemsworth but he definitely has gotten pulled into the kind of Taika Waititi world and like you know he's and he has this intro I wasn't yes. sure what to expect because as an actor he has the, he's taken on this sort of role now as being this sort of like um, this sort of like pretty boy uh, to like you think of like the role he played in like the female Ghostbusters for example like right. he's willing to kind of like play this character who's like you know in some ways like the second fiddle and almost like how what where like a kind of like old school Hollywood would treat a, a treat a female character he almost plays yes. the male so I was like that's interesting we got a Furiosa movie what's he gonna be like but you can steal steal the show as oh my God. and I, I just thought he did a I thought like getting to hear him in an Australian accent Accent was wonderful yeah because we've never heard his Australian accent really in a movie I, I, I believe he's always putting something on and I felt like he just fit beautifully into the like George Miller verse I like, think so too I, I got a bit of criticism I think online for his uh, campy yes yeah. and I think it was fun 
I, and that's always been George to, Miller, though. Like you, there's lo- always a bit of campiness here and there. Like you think of the Road Warrior, that like the guy with the like uh, the mask, and they're just oh, like, what was yeah. his what's his name? I can't remember that character's name. In in Fury Road. Yeah, no, in the in Road Warrior, who was the like oh. the like the big oh like, with the yeah, megaphone. Yeah, and what's stand- his name? It, it was like de- oh, it wasn't Dementis, but it was like they had the similar guy who was just like you yeah. must. It's amazing. Give this, up. Uh, give you up. have no chance. I can't remember yeah. the speech, but it's amazing. But speech. it really like that's it, it. It was harking back to that. But he yeah, had a super camp in that movie. Oh, like, totally. Little guys, with, little guy, kid with a boomerang and, like, and people on leashes. <laughs> super camp. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know where the criticism comes from. And there's also always been this interesting kind of queer element Ooh. to his films too, which I always yes. liked. Yes. And very progressive for the time of oh, like hugely. of like having these like subcultures, these this like dominance behavior, like all this yep. really interesting stuff. So like I the whole movie, I was just like, thank God this exists. Like I felt like it was just. I just love living in that world, just for you know two hours yeah and yeah. and 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 in and the only thing that i would say in terms of like criticism which is almost unfair is that like certainly the practical effects that he that he utilized That's for fury that. road and even yeah. the end of road warrior they're so jaw dropping because you just know that people are really doing this yeah but i also think there's another layer like i don't think he could like in a way, even legally do what he did. Like, he broke so many labor laws <laughs> oh, my in goodness. Fury Road. And there's, like, stories yeah. of, like, just, like, they they just strap Tom Hardy to, like, the front of a thing, and they're like, so, oh, we're just going to drive. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> and so, like, the magic of those movies is all these amazing old school, like, um, uh, like stuntmen yeah. doing, like with all this new technology and i and so i definitely felt like visually it didn't have those the peak kind of kind of moments of like watching no. these stunt guys but i also was, there was like a lot of new things that i really enjoyed it's like oh these all these tactics are new all these weapons are new it's yeah. like, what are they gonna do with that what are they gonna do with that but but it's also it's unfair to give it that criticism because it's kind of like fury road did something that i don't think any movie's ever done before which is just like wall-to-wall action with practical action. like they really driving down in the deserts like at like crazy speeds and it's just these australian stuntmen just being like yeah george i'm gonna flip this semi and just <laughs> Like, yeah. just ride it into the camera and it'll explode and I'll climb sure. out. And then, do it. And, these, and all those behind the scenes, you'll see these guys, like, there'll Ooh. be like a moment where they do a crazy stunt, like a car's flipping it, and like exploding. Yeah. And then everyone pauses and they're like, the stuntman gets out and they're like, fucking thank God. Like, it's just because really, like, there's so many people with their life on the line for that film. So, yeah. there is also an ethical question of, like, sh- you know, I love that we got to see that, but, like, is, is it too much? We're really lucky that, like, five people didn't die making Fury Road. Like, oh, it's, yeah. It's unprecedented sort of level. So, um, it's, but I, but I, but I would like, George Miller just has his 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 unique way of making films that I like. Yeah, love and yeah. like I just had I just was just felt this deep appreciation that this existed. Like I was like, man, yeah. we're so lucky. This shouldn't like this shouldn't exist. No, there's I, no, in no world should, should this movie exist, and it does. Um, one, if I had a criticism of it, it would be the use of CG for the dogs. Yeah, it's like just get them to do something else. Don't don't use CG dogs if you if you don't have to. I, I they were very obvious yeah. and unnecessary. I think. Yeah, and that opening sequence. They could still have dogs. They could still have dogs chewing on things, and it's like, okay, don't don't make them CG. Why? And, and that opening sequence, that sort of Eden like thing, like they're definitely not the strongest visual sequence no. in the film. Um, what are you doing here? When you get into more George Miller wheelhouse Jesus. of like sand and guns and cars, but also like. The thing that's nuts, man, about, like, George Miller is, like, he loves cars and, like, go- puts all this effort into, like, building and making sure that, like, these these cars are, like, properly, like, this would be really what people would do. And, like, just yes. the, the level of production design he does is, like, almost, like, unprecedented. And the level of detail he puts into costumes and, like... Yeah. Um, There's I, almost I, no one who does it like him. No, he really like, thinks through how this would work in these worlds. How would we build these cars from these parts? How would we build weapons from what exists? 
my one of my like I went to see it with my neighbor and he works in construction and something he said is he said you know what's crazy is like the cranes they're using he's like those are exactly the cranes that people use and even the way in which people are operating them is exactly oh. how crane operators would work and he's like isn't and he's and it's like isn't that I, I had no idea about that because I, I have no clue how I like <laughs> how any of this stuff works but it's cool to think that like he he invested in that to be like no I want all the operation of these like mechanics these these things to make Jesus. sense and to work I think you have a yeah you've got a blind spot yeah on this I can't do this in time. Oh, I can duck here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so really, really enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, yeah, 100% enjoyed it. I hope he makes more. If he doesn't, I'm still good Same. with what he's done. Uh, I thought he is. He wants to make more. I thought she did great job, Anya Taylor Joy. Oh, I thought yeah. she did tremendous work. Oh, uh, acting. Throughout, no problems whatsoever. It's all amazing acting. Yeah, and just real, and just I just got immersed back into oh the God, into jumps. the into the world and got to experience another another Mad Max film. Like who who would have thought that we get to see another George Miller film? I have to push that. No, never okay. thought that. Um, have you seen his like kids movies? Yeah. Are they worth watching? Oh, dude, they... Happy Feet is like. The got the craziest <laughs> ending of all time. Oh, really? Happy Feet is like I've never seen anything like this movie. It's so <laughs> okay. it's Ooh, big so battery. fucking nuts. Oh Jesus. Okay, so I got oh my... got some health health back. Okay. okay. Okay, that's good to know that we that's got a good. little a little waypoint. Okay, we're done with the movie. All good. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'll I'll. I guess I'll watch Happy Feet and, and uh, or we can just, the other one? Or we can just pull up the ending. Like, the movie's oh, okay. not worth watching. <laughs> it's just I've never seen an ending like this before. Duck! Damn it. I'm going to get my help back. <laughs> and in, in, a, in a comedic sense. Like and it's... also, what's his other one that he um, did a Babe, sequel for? Um, Babe 2, Babe, Babe in the City. Babe and Babe in the City. Did yeah. he do the first one? I, th I believe he did the first one okay. as well. It's his, and are, his, is that... I know Babe is celebrated as an amazing film. I, I honestly have to say I've only seen Happy Feet. I'm certain I've saw I'm Babe go up ahead. at ma doing? maybe some point in my life. Okay. Yeah, this is the way to evade this guy. Oh, Don't try Lord. to jump around him. Yeah. If possible. Um, but uh, I know I've seen Babe at some point, but I, I can't even remember has, any of it. Has anybody else seen Babe? Uh, and is it worth watching as an adult, or is it like totally a kid's film? Oh my God. No. There. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. I'm just gonna go for yeah, the bottom. Yeah, sometimes you gotta just get out and. Well, that's not. Uh, I guess I can go along the bottom. There's three paths. Uh... Yeah, I, I also watched the Fallout show as well. Um, and oh, that yeah, was, yeah. And that felt like an extension. I was like, oh, I'm getting yeah. to see some wasteland content. Although, definitely, definitely prefer a George Miller world. Um, what should I do? But. I can't go bottom. There. No, I can't. It's blocked. I can't. I can't. Well, you, I think you have a blind spot on the top. I have to go left. along the top. Do, do you know? No, I can't. I literally can't get over this. Ooh. So what I if have you... to go along here. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, just slink up. Whoa! You're good. Okay, one, two. I think it's the same pattern. Three, one. Um, nostalgic. Uh, twenty six says I saw it as an adult though a long time ago and enjoyed it. Okay. I mean, he's a he's a great director and yeah, it, a good director is a good director. So. Even just to check out like what's I going on with know. him. I I mean, we've talked about this before on the show, but in a way, one of the m most amazing movies is Beyond Thunderdome. I've never seen anything that just like <laughs> transitions no. from a fucking good movie to like oh, a insane, like it's just i've it's never a, it's a ki pg kids movie but it's bizarre it turns from a bad max movie into like babe in the city it you does. know what i mean like mid, mid movie mid movie i've never yes, seen anything true. do something like this such an about face like it's just it's what the oh i have to press the button no oh god okay okay that's not too bad no this isn't too bad at all I'm safe here yeah I'm just, is this I'm timed just, I bet it is knowing. I gotta watch. Knowing the challenge of the game. Mm, Maybe not. No, Maybe not you're timed. good. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, choppers. Okay, and there's a button there. I have to fall down and go around again. This is pure VHZC goodness. That's right. I do have to fall down. But but yeah, it's just an. <gasps> no. 
Or, or, you, can, or oh. you go up and then jump at Ooh, the right time. Okay. Oh. No! Oh. So close! No! I should have known that. Yeah, I also enjoyed the Fallout show quite a bit. Oh, me too. I I, I'm so happy they're doing a season two. Yeah, and um, and they really captured the the feeling of the show and the factions. Yeah. And I actually ended up doing a, a, a quick little Fallout Four playthrough post game just because I was kind of still wanting to hang out in the Fallout oh, world. Yeah, yeah. I played a lot of that game though, so it's like there's only like Bethesda games are to tough because oh, once you once you play them, the beauty of those games is exploration. Ah. So like, if you, if yes. You, and so if that's not really a, a factor. Oh, nice! Oh, okay, you you, you Triple, made the right triplicate, choice. Triplicate uh, sp sprite uh, replication there at the bottom to awesome effect. Oh, so good. VHC. So creative. So good. You should check out the movie uh, movie Rabbit yeah. Hole No CGI series or Frame it's Focus Mad good. Max without, uh, without the, the effects. effects. Whenever you're here, we did it all for real. It's simply marketing lie that needs to stop. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, like it's yeah. it's augmented with like there's it's obviously not completely done, but like but some people, but they they promote it as if sometimes. That's true. But every movie, every movie has some elements of CG in it. And and that's and and I would actually argue that's the beauty like of even my like, documentary I made. Yeah. We had to get rid of things and like in the intro of it. But but I think that's the documentary. That's so the beauty funny. of like that film is that you have this old school director who knows yeah. how to do this with the new technology, and you can get this hybrid of like. It's how it. It's it's how you. Ah no! Whoa! No! Oh. I have one, one left. Uh, run, run, run! You got run, this. You got this. Okay, yeah. good. Ah! Uh, ah! <laughs> I can't go below. I do have to go this. Way. Okay. He does a zigzag. Okay. Well, yeah, it's good. It got me out to the theater, which is fun. I always forget how fun it is to see a movie in theater. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was empty though. Sad. How was your? How full was yours? And what day did you go? Um, when did I go? Uh, I think I went. I need an e. I think I actually went last Friday, if okay. I if I believe. So and, the second day. Yeah, and it was like it was definitely a full theater. Okay. Um, it's just oh my god, I need exi. But I I didn't go to like a giant theater though. I went to like um. This game's huge. Um, I actually went to the VIP theater because, like, my friends were saying we should see it in 4D, and I was like, no, I'm not. That's with the rumble seats? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I just, I, I, I'm, I just, done. I'm done with all that stuff. I just want to watch the movie. Like, I just want to chill out and watch a film. There's the like, eye. I don't, like, want to do all that stuff. Like, um, uh, we went to Dune 2 yeah. with the wraparound screen that kind of stretches and yeah. blurs it. It was, it was so distracting. So I'd rather just watch the movie. Yeah. You know? I just want to get immersed in the story most of, most of all. You, know? you do forget, you forget all these gimmicks after you, uh, once, well oh, that bouncing skull is so good. Wow. That's the thing, man, is this is like, he's one of the goats of these, of these games, man. It's just so I'm crazy scared. that like, that the VH that, said, see that. like, like how many fucking games this guy made? <laughs> so many. And like they like all have this unique style, and they like are so in depth. There's so much to do. Like, yeah. And oh, I'm terrible pumpkin. at them, <laughs> but I appreciate them I have so no... deeply. Like even just this sure. simple detail of like we got this like this like jack o' lantern like demon fucking head. Okay, I'm gonna go. You kind of gotta go with it, I think. Yeah, yeah. you do. And then do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey buddy, am I a seat or a bridge? I'm gonna do this. I think I need to follow him. Give you a hug. Then I need to go underneath him. Yep, there we go. Now do I go up or down? Well, not there. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hey good buddy. kitty. You should lay down between us. Okay. Stop causing trouble. He's like, it's what I do. So that makes it go back. Oh, oh, it's time. No! No! I have to do all that again. Oh, my God. I, well, I know the tactic now, but I don't have any life left. <laughs> I need all my life back. I need a refill. I need some checkpoints. At least I knew to do that. Makes sense. You actually took quite a while to sort of feel out the timing of this. Yeah. This is fun. 
smart, 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 smart. I gotta move it. No! Go! Go, 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 go! Oh, okay, we got this. We got this. That's fine. That's that's. This, this is the design of the skull rotation so is good. so, so cool. Uh, oh, stay up. Okay. Oof. Oof. Oh, the eye is within reach. That's oh, so close. The eye of Sauron must be so mine. Close. Oh, boy. Punch classic. I love this little, like, fist. Punch. 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 It's quite a delay. Good. Yeah. Classic punch. I feel like the timing of all that. And then I gotta do it again. Oh, two in a row and then go. Okay, good. Smart. Okay. Yes. Give me some energy. Oh, Damn you gotta it. go back. This game is like brutal. Like every VHZC game, you have to like. Punch? It's a gauntlet, Punch. is what it is. It is. It's a true gauntlet. Oh, you like. Let me through. True gauntlet, yeah. Punch. 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 Do it on the second one. Then I go down. And I do this again. And then I just drop. Yeah, but it's crazy the Furiosa movie doesn't sound like it's doing super well in theaters. <sighs> theaters are hurting. People are burned out of just crappy movies, maybe. Superhero movies. And just, they're over... They're... People don't have money. That, I think that's the biggest factor. People are, are hurting right now. And it, and it's just that you can get such a comparable experience at home, too, is yeah. another challenge. Like, it used to be really, like, the difference between, like, your, like, tube TV was VHS was versus, like, yeah. you know, versus the uh, theater, you know? Eyes open. Eyes open. Uh -huh. uh, so now, what I, yeah, the, the, I'm backtracking to... Nowhere? Keep going. Where do I go now. next? I can't. Ah! <laughs> it was point. Oh, maybe I have to go up? How do I get... I can't go here. Because that's not open yet. How do I get up there? Oh, this is what I do. Look, I have to make it through this. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So after he passes there, I go up. And after he passes above, I go up. And you got I it, man. Cross. I really need that extra energy. But now what? Oh, I've he, been here. He brings up a good point. It also used to be long time before a theater movie could be even available to watch at all. But yeah. now, like, if you have two weeks. Yeah. Pretty it, much. And, like, it was sped up shortly after VHSs happened. So they... they a little bit into that, they sped it up. And then the pandemic really s accelerated the release. And now people expect it like, yeah, two weeks now. Yeah. And They're also, like, why would we go to the theater? And this sticky, noisy people texting, uh, teenagers y talking. Why would we do that when it's yeah. cheaper at home? And we've got this awesome stereo system and a huge television. Yeah, and remember too, Have like it here? used to be, like you would go to like the movie, like a movie store, and you'd have like the yeah. one day DVD rental, you know, yeah. or the two day, and then you maybe like it would turn into a seven day, and you'd be <laughs> like, oh, I have time to watch this one. Yeah, they'd even be the same day one where you'd have to like you you rent basically like <laughs> they need it back. Yeah, because they only it's have so release. many DVDs, you know. He's got the pong in here. Nice. It's just such a different era. I also really the other thing that I think about too is like I also don't know if like the theatrical experience is is like the do is a dominant media form in the way that it used to be. You know, I just really do no. believe that like it used to be that seeing going to the theater for a theatrical experience was a, like a core way of consuming content. It was. It was so it was very traditional. People expected it. People were understood it. Um, Especially for the oh. younger generations, I really sometimes wonder like Oh man, we're, we're, we are collecting. We need one more. We need the tea. Who's this gonna take us? Do we need the tea? We just need the tea. Yeah, just gotta get, to get the tea. The tea to the know tea. what's going on. Promotions becomes even more important. You can yes. also pay for a no ad experience at home. Not as much at the theater. Yeah, it's so true. That's true. You get a lot of ads in the theater. Also, it's like pretty expensive. That's the other thing too. Yeah, when you get it's crazy. You can expensive. share the cost at home. Right? For the c less than a cost of a ticket, you get unlimited movies for a month. And people know that now. Okay, 
this is new new territory here. Ooh, now what? Yeah, back when TVs were 25 inch CRTs, with the built in single speaker. <laughs> yep, mono. Through VHS, like what, 480p interlaced? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Ah! Okay. Oh! So yes, that's it. That's it. E now. Okay, good. Okay, don't kill myself right here. <gasps> yeah, no, just take your time. Take your time. Now. No, 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 no. Okay. Now, does this just lead to the T and I have to backtrack again? Possibly, but let's do we'll a little, little experimentation. We'll see. Let's see. Yes. <sighs> Bastard. Do we know where the T is? I don't know. I this is I've opened everything. Yeah, and I also um I also got a smart TV. I just bought one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just to have a, t a, a TV to watch shows on and stuff. Nice. What were you you were doing? Just my laptop and like my like computer. computer. But oh, I just okay. I can't I just can't sit at a, my computer. Like I'm already at my computer so fucking much for work that yeah, I yeah I wanted it's to, just too much, right? Yeah, and um. So is it that way? But but then but then they got me with the YouTube Premium, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I managed to like skirt by without the YouTube Premium. And it's just too much but, after a while. But when like, you oh. when you got it in the in the smart TV format, but I also like even from like a filmmaking point of view, like I believe now that like a smart TV is a format that a majority of people are consuming content yes. on. Yeah. So even just visually and audio, like I really wanted to have that as a tool that I could like play back and see how's this sounding and looking. Um, yeah, because because this is how people are, I think are because it doesn't matter how it looks on a on a laptop or theatrically as well. I just think that like the default setting of a uh, smart TV is like oh, okay. the, I should oh, do that. You should hundred percent do that. Yeah, if that's possible, do it. Oh, it is. Yeah, I'm definitely doing because I am on my last battery. We need it so bad. Um. Yeah, it's. It's the way to go, um, and the ads are insane now. Um, I mean, we have had smart TVs for a while, and and it's convenient too. Like you can just use your phone to stream whatever you want. Yeah. So. Um, and you can install Plex if you're in if you've got your own DVDs you've ripped, which right. I actually do. I have tons of yeah, DVDs. And I have a hard drive. I can just yep. plug into it, and you can just play files off the hard drive, which yep. is great. And like. So yeah, I'm like it, it's it's been really nice. Um, and then I, I do, but trying to like trying to pick the one that oh, I wanted I to there. buy. Have I done that? I don't think so. I think this is it. This has got to be our tea. Maybe. I don't remember the screen. I don't remember the screen either. Maybe. Oh no. Oh no. This is this is new. What? Are we underwater? We're what is a, going on? We can go. Oh, there's. Oh. Oh, that's oh, it. Oh god, we want our tea. But oh. no, no, we have to find. Oh a, no! How do we escape? <laughs> oh, no. no. So, well, at least. Oh, that's that looks. No, that's death. <laughs> I was like, are we losing health? No, we're good. We're just underwater. Oh my god! Just get the hell out of me! <laughs> like oh, I'm wasting time. Scared. We are. We are like. Oh my god! Oh, no. Oh. Okay, we got. Luckily, we recovered our health. Yeah. So we can fight these like <gasps> these seahorses. Oh, I just go this. I just go over them. Yeah, yeah. Just okay. Do ah. Possible. Those pumpkins are moving so fast. They are. Okay. There and back again. All you got to do is probably get through this. Oh, uh, that'll then... do it. Oh, there we go. Okay, we drained it. Okay, that's the end. Oh, now we just got to go back and get the... Okay. That's very cool, man. Nice. Very kind of like um, oh, inspired no. <laughs> by like Mario, you know, like the yes. water level. Oh, that's awesome. The fish are all flopping around now. It makes sense. No water. Oh, I love the lore. Yeah, you got to pop in the middle and then find that timing. Oh, okay. VH said, see, you've done it again. Oh, what a... You've done it again. Oh. Those are sea squirrels. Sea squirrels, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're drowning before. Oh, yeah, so Gamma Dev just said before, the teen theaters need to step up their game. We had a new premium theater that opened up during the pandemic, and its tickets were the same as regular theater, but they have big reclining seats, no obstructions. They also have room service to your seats since they make their money on concession. Oh yeah, we we have those. They're called VIP here. That's the one I went to. Yeah, they're um, awesome. We go to that every time we can. Yeah. You get food delivered to your seat. Yeah. I, I, the only thing is, I do believe, like you said, they recline. Yeah. I do believe though that like the Ultra AVX is like higher quality uh, technically. Yeah. But it's also that's like, the issue because also like when they if you think about it like if you're gonna convert like a theater. Ooh. 
um, you know, into this thing, like, you're not necessarily gonna have the, the greatest, like, actual, like, audio and sound stuff, but it's, like, it's not like it's bad. No, it's, it's just totally like, fine. It's totally good, but I think it's, I do like the Ultra AVX for just, like, the premium, like, this is the, this it's is the, the best. This is the world's best projector and sound system to watch this on. Um, oh, yes, 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 you got this, you got this. Yeah! Ooh. Okay, not much more to go now. No, don't do that. Okay. Just have to get back to the exits. Or the... the... And not get crushed by the fist. Where's the timing? In between? No. After the second one. Yeah. yeah. And then I go back... Pause. No, what? Oh, no. Okay, I have to go down to the bottom. Oops. It's okay, that's okay. We're, we're ramping. It's all good. Yeah, I have I've, I've enough time to make it to the exit, I think. Unless there's something after and there's a boss fight. Oh, boy. But I'm pretty full on health. Yeah, yeah, you're doing... Where's the bottom? That's part of the, the challenge. It must be to the bottom right. Oh, no. Oh, oh, okay. oh, it's actually just literally like yeah. down. Okay, okay, that's good. That's fine. Just down. Okay. That's just fine. simple, simple. Yep, very simple. I just have to make through the fists, which are not too bad. Okay, one, two, and then go. It's open! <gasps> it's open! Okay. We're nearing the end. VHC games are an experience. They truly are. And They're like, you, you, you just, it's the joy of playing through them. It's not necessarily the challenge. There is challenge. But it's it's the joy of discovery. I will say they are challenging because I've never <laughs> been able to beat one. It's maybe for James, there's no challenge. Usually I can do it on the first try sometimes second try there's, not not with a good time but there's definitely like some skill checks that you pass it? oh it's adding it up okay james beat it that's so i'm so impressed first try too. first time but i did play like a third of it the first um first time i played and it you, and you've i think beaten all of his other games too oh, right so uh, there might be ooh, one or two you there haven't. might be one or two one of the maze ones but you Slide boy in maze land i don't if I finish that one. There's some hard... But you've gotten, like, you know, 80%, 85%. You know. Oh, yeah. Great job. Or excellent. Yes. Thank you so much, Nostalgic. Well, Looks that... like another fun one to speed run. 100%, yeah. 100%. Ivor Tower Collections likes getting, like, the high, high score in this, and he just blazes through. Which you can do if you memorize it. I'm not great at memorizing things, so it slows me down. That's the tactic, though. Hey, that's so the speed light. runs are not necessarily for me. High, like, high scores... I, I can go for or it's, but not speed. Runs. It's an important thing to think about though, right? Because people will play your game differently, especially for games like this. And if you can appeal to like a speed running community, yes. like that's a fan, that's just nothing but a win there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's where having timers, having points for if you complete things quicker, like it's actually a good design choice to make it because there are people who that's their thing, you know? Yeah, if you can um, craft your game. So it appeals to just casual gamers, hardcore gamers, speed runners, um, and like all the different ways people play games. You got it made. Like, it's like a, it's nothing but a win. I think VHSC does strike that balance really well because he has those um, refueling. None of his games are like brutal hard. Yeah. Well, some of his shooters are. Some of his mm -hmm. early games where it's like almost endless. Those are very hard. I didn't complete those. I don't even know if there is an end. Um, these, these games, like the maze games, they're more exploration. There's challenge to them. I'm not saying there's not a challenge. They're up my alley because they're platformers with a tiny bit of puzzle. Um, they are a very doable, very accomplishable given enough time, depending on your skill level, you can do it. Like you saw that you'd make it through playing it enough yeah right? if i did it I definitely i think I, I could i also love whenever there's a vh said vhnc game yeah. i know that it's like i'll play it a little bit james will like 
actually beat it but then it's also a chance for me to like talk about movies and stuff so i always that, like it that, i always like it they're on the... long enough to have a good conversation yeah while you're playing and it's fun i get to go into commentary mode so i always appreciate like just as a format for the show not to get too meta yeah. about it but i love his games for the show because it like there we get to like have this thing to really appreciate and then i get to take a bit of a back seat and kind of let you drive yeah. and i really enjoy that um shit there are there's there's a channel that i did show off Maybe a year ago, some guy was speedrunning 2600 games. So definitely go on YouTube, type in 2600, Atari 2600 maybe, to get more specific, speedrun. And uh, I don't know if he was using TAS or if he was doing it like properly. I think he was using TAS though um, to speedrun, tool assisted uh, speedrun. Yeah. Um, and it's fascinating to see somebody just dominate a game. Oh, I, I love watching speedrunners like show off their skills. It's also fascinating how many speedrunners have been busted for cheating. It's actually oh, crazy. It's so fun watching those. It's, it's like it's fun watching how they determined how they figured out he was they were cheating. And it's it's beyond the scope of anyone except for somebody so intimately familiar with the game. They're like, "Well, this wouldn't be like this if he played it this way right. and that would be in a different position or an, or he wouldn't have that score at this point in the game or that weapon yeah and that enemy would have been dead at this point it's like also what for, i've heard a lot too like in a lot of those racing games they'll code it to play at half speed so they can make those oh. those perfect decisions and then they'll speed the game up so that you know they're actually playing it at this half speed yeah. especially to make those like specific turns and maneuvers i just find all that stuff fascinating um, yeah um and um just relating to old school there used the, on some systems there was a pause feature right and it would pause it and when you pressed it then you unpause it it would continue on so some smart people thought i'm gonna pause and unpause constantly on the game and it would s essentially slow down the game and you could adjust how fast they would pause and unpause the game it would just be a, a button on the joystick so it'd be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and would go to half speed or even slower. And um, you'd or, have to turn off the volume if it went da ding. Or, it or a perfect edit point to be able to uh, cut together like yes. your best of. That's an interesting thing too. You'll see with speedrunners, they'll have like... They'll splice it. Yeah, yeah how, how fast I've done this portion of the game. I mean, that's a legitimate speedrunning tactic. It's like, oh, level... They'll they'll get speedrun records on levels. And then they'll and then if they cut together all their best, that, and that creates the total... That's their perfect game. And the pause screen get. is like a great <laughs> edit point to like... Oh, yes. If you want to... Slow motion button. Start around Genesis and SNES generations, yeah. Uh... I want to go back here. Thrust, my says, my games are not usually not good for talking besides playing. Your games are br brutally hard and you have to concentrate. Yeah. Like they are uh, Twitch games, not but, Twitch. And, yeah. That's where Twitch got its name. But yeah, they're like, oh, you have to be on the ball. Yeah, but I, I deeply appreciate that style as well. You know, it's, I love playing all the different styles of just, games. Like this VHSCs are like kind of relaxing. I can even talk while I'm playing. Yeah, them. and they're often like they're great. They're great for the format of the show. Like oh, it's yeah. really really it's, nice. It's wonderful. And yeah. then they have a nice clear beginning, middle, and end down. too, which is really nice as well. They do. I, I like, and I and I do craft the shows in a specific way yeah, if you haven't noticed there's a there's a free edit the shows this madness where i end on a game where there's satisfaction if i can like a vhc game or i put a a long game at the end where people can tap out yeah. if they want or if they're like hardcore they can go right to the end or leave it in the background and it and it, i like doing that too it's like oh i get some satisfaction i won the game at the yeah, end. yeah right? you want to leave on a win you know yeah yeah exactly right atari you want to leave on a win you definitely do and he's calmed down sleepy now. cat now. he's sleeping off the treats he's like oh <laughs> treat mode has been engaged thanks dan i had a lot of fun like previewing the poc games yeah we got some poc actually. yeah <laughs> a little poc and i might do that on. in the future like i mean i'll have to run across a game where it's like oh this game has legs this game is gonna go far man i'll, I'll tell you something i'm always down for some poc <laughs> <laughs> i know you are i know you are um, so let's see what's uh, coming up on the show. I'm trying to craft some game, uh, some shows together. Um, it's been a little slow, a little slow. I know there's a lot of games 
behind the scenes. Yeah. I get a I get a glimpse in because I I do some uh, game testing and stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot coming up, but stuff that's been shown, uh, it's been a little slow right now. I think people are uh, holding back on um, some big games coming out. Yeah, uh, there's seasons to this stuff, hey. There is. The weather gets better. People want to go outside. They slow down. Um, so there's a great 7800 game that we're gonna play. I, I really want to pair it with something. Maybe I'll dig in the archives. I mostly played every 7800 the game. Archives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't think there's many 7800 games that I haven't shown on the stream because 7800 games have really picked up in the last like while we've been doing the show and before that it was pac-man plus really that dominating <laughs> and played all his games because we did uh, spotlight on him um we have to do the rest of the 7840th anniversary classic game and countdown we did the first show of that so there's still um 39 games to play through because so it's its 40th anniversary a couple yeah. weeks ago uh we're gonna have a no show on june 7th and june 28th we've got uh, things going on but we've got fury to play i know there's some links games i haven't played so i think that might be a bit easier to find some pairings for that <laughs> 202405XX. After Dark XX. XX. Yeah, I put that because I don't know which day. <laughs> yeah, it's just. But I know it's going to be. Well, it won't be this month. It'll be 06 now. Yeah, try not to. Today's the last day of the month. Yeah, that's a good point. Unless I do it tonight, but probably not. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it now. Let's do just blaze through them all. No, I have to get Tanya's some... family. You can. That's right. Go, go for from... lunch. We're just gonna get play some seventy hundred after hours. No, I have to do research. I have to gather cartridges and just get do it the... organized. So I have something to say yeah, about do them. The thing. Um. Let's see what else. Nothing else. Um. Do, do, do. Steve Engelhart. I think we're really getting close to his spotlight. His secret homebrew is uh, pretty much ready now. I think he's ready with that. So that'll come up. Um, we've got something with Alan the Fur coming up as well. Um, that's not posted on here, but uh, we're narrowing down the date. I can't really reveal too much because I want it to kind of be a secret. We'll yeah. see how much we reveal beforehand on that. But it is a um, live interview with some developers. Uh, Lawrence Stavely Reboot. I know that's coming up very shortly. It's uh, the game we want to pair with that. Jumping in Shadows is very close to being ready. So I think those are going to be pushed forward a bit. Oh, Thomas has three games in the making. One, Ooh. I have to focus on one now. Tough. Ah, that's always excellent. Tough part, Looking man. forward to some new games. Sometimes the trick is to procrastinate from one project by doing another project. Yes, a, and I know a lot of developers do that. And powerful it, it tactic. Is helpful. <laughs> it is helpful because in the back, your brain is working on that other game. It's like, and then you get the breakthrough. And like that's how I do it. That's right. Got it. Um, I have to start working back on my games right now. I need to finish off my pack line, yeah. which I don't think will be too tough to do. There's things I need to learn to finish it. Um, which is awesome. That's yeah, the whole uh, that's the whole point. I, I'm going to do learn how to do the save key so I can save high scores. I need to learn how to alternate frames. But that's not too hard because you just go, what frame are you on? Yeah. Draw something different. Oh, you're on that frame? Draw that thing. You can just have a, a variable for which frame. anyone wants to send frame. James paragraphs for him to read no. on these concepts. He'll... No, thanks. <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can figure it out. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I personally <laughs> implore someone to send paragraphs to James. No, I, if I ask. If I ask. <laughs> I'm some, asking for it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> put some Easter egg on Pac-Line. Ooh. I know of an Easter egg right now. I can do. You gotta do it. Yep. Everyone loves an Easter egg. Luma Boost. Yeah, I definitely will include Luma Boost for sure. Luma Boost is when you have Flicker, so you're only showing one thing at a time every second frame. So when you're only showing a second frame it's not as bright because it's only on screen half the time so you kind of calculate how much brighter it should be to compensate for it only being on the 30th uh, of the time um so it's it's you just have a uh, you up it by one or two or enough to make it look equivalent if it wasn't flickering 
So I need to do that with the ghost and the fruit when it's on the screen. The fruit will always be Luma boosted, so it doesn't matter. I'll just yeah. figure that out. Oh, will it be? Yeah, it's always, because the ghost never disappears off the screen. But when the fruit's on the screen, the ghost needs to be boosted a bit, so it retains the colors of it normally. But that's not too hard. Um, an Easter egg, I know exactly how to do a good Easter egg for Packline, but what to do for the Easter egg? figure that out yeah that's a great suggestion polygox and then i can uh like send a cartridge to the first person who figures out the easter egg that's uh that's now something that is a beautiful challenge yep yeah that is a good one i can make it the easter egg really hard or really easy i think i'll make it easy because i make it too hard i'm terrible finding out easter eggs yeah. in absolutely i never find them it's way way too hard because they could be anywhere they could be in the title screen, they could be during the game. Oh, what are you saying? The, the, thank you for playing my games live. I really liked it. I'm sorry about the Tank Ovni game. I don't, oh, don't be apologize. Well, there was no no apologies needed, man. We it's... play games on the show to help developers. If, Just... if we think a game could be have more in it or change something, you don't have to take our advice, but... We want games to be the best they can be, yeah, and, and to be fun for everyone. It's fun to check out your games, man. You don't need to apologize for anything. Thanks for honestly, thank you for making them and giving oh. us content to play on the show. Man. Making it's a so game great. is a huge accomplishment. Both of us, as filmmakers, we know the struggle of making art. And I've made a game now, and it's huge to yeah. to think of it, to implement it, to finish it. That's. All three are very hard to do. The finishing. The finishings, and that's the last 10% is 90% of doing it. We've got a lot of POCs out there. <laughs> so many POCs. we got a lot of POCs. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and you've made five, six games now. So, yeah, don't, don't feel that we're criticizing to put down any games. It's, it's constructive criticism to make your games better. Yeah. And if you think your games are awesome, that's good enough for anyone. We want to make all the games better we make suggestions and, and when a game's done we're, we're usually like that's what the game is they think it's done um yeah we just celebrate them yeah by playing them and everyone has different tastes like there's just that's the other thing too is that like what's one person's favorite game might be someone's least favorite and like exactly. everyone's got biases there's there's stuff i like there's stuff tanya likes there's stuff yep. james likes D tanya likes uh puzzle games i like platforms and shooters he loves RPGs, he likes in-depth games. I like tactic-based Ta stuff. Tactics, like if there's yes. like a like like kind of like uh, uh, anything that you you have like a one turn, their turn, one turn, their turn. Yeah. There was like a there's that one game we played that was so fucking good. Was it Predator one? Yes. Yeah, that I, was, knew, I knew you were thinking that. That was one, one of the all-time best games. Where you have to I've use played. different weapons and the movements are yeah, different. That, and you have to. It was very chess-like. That stuff is so like it just it hits me. I love that stuff. But that's like my taste, right? Yep. Like, and I I don't like platformers as much, but it's not because like I think platformers are bad. I'm yeah. just not very good at them. Yeah. And that's a huge factor. And I love. I'm good at the things I love because I play them a lot and he loves tactic based so he plays them a lot so it, it goes hand in hand with what you love and I love having different people on the show yeah. and I do, and I also cater that way too it's like oh there's a tactic game this has got to be an Errol and Dan yeah and I, and I do my best to be forthcoming with my personal biases because yeah. those are like there's no never any judgment upon a game because also no, like no, no, no. Different, different things for different people, and then also the other thing is, is that like the format of Twitch, some games work better than others yeah. for like watching someone play, and it's like we always talk about, but puzzle games are a challenge. Oh, they're like, hard because it's hard to watch someone play a puzzle. Um, yeah. Compared to other things, but I also think puzzle games are some of the best games ever. Like they are to they're... just have like puzzles to figure out. It's awesome, but it's more solo oriented, you know. Almost like almost like bathroom games. We like I say he's making an announcement tomorrow. Oh, Ooh. I didn't know it was tomorrow. I better do some things. <laughs> uh, I can't say anything. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, so that's all yeah. good. Um, I yeah, I better do some stuff. All I know is Audacity <laughs> is a like software they use for audio production. It is, but and that might might not be what we're being. No, it's to. it's um, David Crane. Dan Kitchen and uh, the other kitchen, whose <laughs> name has escaped me right now. I don't know why. Uh, I know what's up. 
I know what's up. Yeah, James has got his finger got on the pulse. Yeah, yeah. Knows Gary Kitchen. On. Gary right. Kitchen. With two R's. Um, I think. Yeah, I do I do know what's going on. Unless it's something else, which I doubt it is. But who knows? Who knows? But there's something happening. Yeah, there's I well something's happening. I gotta go see. They obviously made said something gave, is happening. Gave a post. But I'm not like I'm not part of the company, so I'm not part of their like rollout marketing yeah. or anything like that. But you're, I talk with I talk with the Dan a lot. Media guy. Yep. Um, yeah, so I got to do something, um, because they asked me to do something. Corkscon. Oh, are they doing something at Corkscon then? Is it? Hmm. Hmm. Let's do a little. They are going to be a post was made in Atari Age forums. Oh, something announcing something at the convention. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So I've got Corkscon up on the screen. Who is who are the special guests? I'm guessing all three of them are there. Oh, yeah, there's Gary, David, Dan. Mm, the three dudes, and I had them on the show um, for their circus convoy and interviewed them. For yeah. Because they, um, David Crane, I don't know if you know this, he he co founded Activision. Well, they said humming sounds still on. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's in the background. Oh, because the game's still going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, David Crane co-founded Activision. Oh, fuck. Man. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... It, I mean, yeah, that's a big company. Um, but it was back in the day with, like, 2600 with, like, Pitfall. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Pitfall and... and a, they made the best 2600 games. Like, all these games up here. Kaboom and... Yeah. Amazing. Obviously, he has nothing to do with Activision again. But he f now runs Audacity, another A... And um, in between that, he also, when he left Activision, um, he made, what was the other name of it? The Static? Oh, my God. Well, it's usually one of the connections on the microphone. And I don't know why it does that. It's like grounds itself. And all I have to do is reconnect the microphone at one of its points. And then we're back. So with that, there's one left. Not that. Um, hmm. Interesting. That's okay. We're near, we're near the one end. one more. We're near the oh, end. We are near the end, but... Check. The, I, I, just looking at the levels, it's probably yeah. better. No, it's still there. What the hell? No! Okay, well, you're gonna... Absolute. That's what I was looking for. So you, you kept naming them, so it was before the other... Like, Absolute was before Activision in the list. That's so funny. It is still there. Uh, I've disconnected and reconnected, so I don't know what is happening. It's so, tolerable. Sorry, It's guys. tolerable, yeah. Uh, it's near the end anyways. That, near might the end. Our, that might be our cue to, to head on out of here. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Pseudographics, uh, Trust, Gamma Dev, Al uh Ivory Tower Collections, Chitlitla, Oleani Games. Thanks so much for making your awesome games. Al Nefer, Dan ABC, BR Pocock, uh, who else? Double Down, Polly Gox, Carl G, Prow7, Gamer Composer, all the usual suspects thank you so much when's the next 70 hunter marathon oh don't know yet tbd it's very busy right now i'd like to get it done might be saturday night might be sunday night i would like to do it on one of those days i will have to check with tanya um and we will see so uh more fun atari gaming at least on Tuesday when we come back with Tanya. So uh, right. stay tuned. For Remember that. to raid. That's right. Oh, 
We're going to raid, yes. yes. Let's see who's broadcasting. Ooh, usually the afternoons, there's not as many. It's usually the night. But let's check. It's always worth a shot, you know? Pass on the. So let's see who's broadcasting. First, let's see our, if we have any friends broadcasting. Nope. Nope. Following. That's what we want. Nope. Nobody that. So we'll go to some retro streams, see if there's any really retro streams. Usually NES is like the limit. But sometimes there's something that's kind of related. Oh, somebody's playing Activision games. Let's do that, man. Well, there uh, we go. This was this uh Charlie Farr. Dude, Charlie Farr, guys. Us. Well, I'll send you to a hot tub hot tub stream. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Charlie Farr. Okay, so we will see you at least on Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out with us on Zero Page Homebrew. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. And we'll see you really, really, really soon as I queue up the outro. Really, really soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, guys.